A very good morning to you and a happy Saturday to you and welcome to The Key Points with me, Abna Tabi. It is the 8th day of February 2020 and it's another Saturday, obviously. We're back here to look at issues of national importance, matters that made the headlines during the course of the week. As usual, we're running from now till 9.50 where conversations will be brought to a close and we encourage you to, in the course of the program, share with us your contributions, your thoughts, your remarks, whatever it is you have to share regarding the topics we'll be discussing this morning. Send your comments to our WhatsApp line 020-2166-633 and we will read them out as we go along on the program. Now, I guess it's safe to say that this week has been a week of debates over scandals, interesting matters being discussed. Um, just when the NPP went to town over the Airbus scandal, uh, the government was rocked by the missing excavator scandal. And the NDC also went to town over the missing excavator. So indeed, it has been a back and forth of accusations uh, or allegations one after the other. Now, you do recall that in July 2017, the president said that he was ready to sacrifice his presidency to protect our environment by fighting Gallam Say. Now, you may want to give him some credit. Indeed, uh, he did put his presidency on the line. He constituted the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining that drove illegal uh, miners from various sites across the country, seized their equipment, and in some instances, foreigners who were involved were arrested and uh, deported. But now, can we go to the bank with the president's declared commitment? Uh, that commitment appears to have been put to the test in recent times following the scandal of the missing excavators. On the show this morning, we shall try to understand exactly what the situation is with the missing excavators. We're asking the questions, exactly where could these excavators have gone? And whilst we're looking at this issue of the missing excavators, we'll definitely talk about the Airbus scandal, which uh, as of now, the president has referred to the office of the special prosecutor for investigation and questions have come up a lot of questions indeed questions as to um, the content of the judgments by both the uk and the us questions as to who government official one is or perhaps even is it even necessary for us to be wondering who that government official one is along with intermediary five and all those code names in there on the show this morning we shall again try to wrap our heads around this Airbus scandal, if you would like to call it that, and then understand exactly what it is we intend to do with the referral of this issue to the office of the special prosecutor. Obviously, the special prosecutor himself has come, I mean, has come under the radar with questions as to the propriety or otherwise of uh, Mr. Martin Amidou being the one to lead this investigation. We shall delve into all these issues um, surrounding these two major, major issues tabled for conversation this morning. So indeed, these are the two topics we'll be discussing um, on the program today. Uh, we shall take a quick break. When we come back, I will introduce to you the August panel that we have constituted to look into these matters. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll see you shortly. This is The Key Point. Stay with us. This morning, we'll start the conversation by looking at the Airbus scandal. Um, a number of issues have come up. We're trying to understand exactly where we are regarding uh, the judgments that have been put out and, you know, have been discussed extensively during the course of the week. Um, the panelists are seated. I'll quickly introduce them. From my extreme left, we have Mr. Bobby Banson. He is a private legal practitioner. Next to him is Mr. Gary Nimako, also a private legal practitioner and a member of the NPP legal team. To my right, we have the Honorable Alaji Inusa Fuseni, uh, also a private legal practitioner and an MP for or the MP for Tamale Central Constituency and also was uh, the minister under the John Mahama administration for lands and natural resources. And last but not least, we have Mr. Edem Senanu. He is a co-chair of Citizens Movement Against Corruption. 
Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to and, you. And you're looking good this morning. Thank you very much. So you are you. woke us up so early, we, we couldn't sleep. But I'm sure you're excited <laughs> to state your position on the issues here. So, yes, it's good to have you here. We're grateful. Right, good We're grateful. Yeah, We're grateful. Uh, indeed, um, I'm sure you agree with me that it's been an interesting week. A week of, you know, one scandal after the other. <laughs> Some saying excavators versus um, aircraft and all of that. We shall be delving into the, you know, the matters that have come up since these um, news items broke. Um, we'll be playing um, some videos, um, you know, that have also come along given the, um, the, the, the developments this week, statements by the NPP, of course, the NDC as well. So as we go along, we will have those coming in to, you know, throw some more light on the discussions as we go. If it's ready, I think we can have uh, the, the, the first one play where we're listening to that. Last week, Airbus entered into a deferred prosecution agreement with the British Serious Fraud Office. The Airbus was implicated for bribing or failing to prevent corruption and transactions in five countries, including Ghana. Under the agreement, the British SFO agreed to suspend the prosecution of Airbus for a period of three years. The mention of Ghana in the agreement sparked a debate as to which government official was involved. The opposition NDC issued a statement denying that its officials in the erstwhile Mills and Mahama administrations were involved in any corruption with Airbus which supplied military aircraft to Ghana in 2012. The government official referred to in the court document, the NPP argues, is former President John Mahama. On the face of the evidence presented, government official one appears to be no other than former President John Dramani Mahama, now presidential candidate of the NDC for the 2020 presidential and general elections. The new patriotic party, would have been content with the swift response of the government in referring the matter to the office of the special prosecutor. Indeed, we would have, and we commend His Excellency the President for his swift decision to refer the matter to the office of the special prosecutor. The party is challenging the former president to officially respond to the court document to prove his innocence. We are calling the former president out. That former president, now candidate John Dramani Mahama, responds directly to the issue himself. Question, is he government official one? Question, is he the high elected Ghana government official, also known as government official one? Candidate Mahama is no stranger to speaking to the international community and the world. So he shouldn't find any difficulty responding to these questions we are putting him now. The deferred prosecution agreement didn't specifically name any official who might have been bribed or corrupted during Ghana's negotiations with Airbus, but it refers to personalities involved as government official one, a high-ranking elected public figure, and intermediary five, a British national and close relative of government official one, among others. To begin with, there's nothing to be answered for insofar as the source documents for all this bruhaha, that is the approved judgment in which the deferred prosecution agreement is highlighted, does not make any specific claim or allegations of wrongdoing or bribery against any known Ghanaian government official who served in the previous government. Also, nobody is in fact named as having been engaged in any form of wrongdoing whatsoever. Therefore, it begs the question as to why there is even a need to speak to this matter. As far as the government of Ghana is concerned, it engaged in a legitimate transaction, purchased aircraft which are currently in use. What the documents point to is a transactional relationship between Airbus and what the documents refer to as an intermediary, intermediary five. They claim that this so-called intermediary five is, was related to a government of Ghana official, who they call government official one. They don't mention names. 
So we will be operating in the realms of absurdity and speculation if we purported to, we purported to answer for questions that have not been asked. So in a nutshell, there's really nothing to answer for. They have latched onto these innocuous claims contained in the, uh, what call it, approved judgments of the UK courts and are seeking to equalize, basically trying to sanitize the president. But I think the facts speak for themselves. And uh, there's no way that President Akufado can escape the specter of corruption that has beset him. He has not shown any commitment. And it is little wonder that the most authoritative corruption indicator or barometer in this world, the Corruption Perception Index, condemns him as one of the worst performing presidents we've had in terms of the fight against corruption. So we are unfazed. Uh, president Mama has demonstrated, at least when he was president, that he was tough and he dealt with corruption decisively and conclusively. I went to the internet to check prices of various aircrafts. As we got, I have a copy here, I will table it before you. My concern is value for money. And one would have thought that social democrats will be more interested in value for money so that we will save the taxpayer the little money that we have in this country. The speaker, the standard price of every plane is quoted. The Embraer 190 that we are being told today in this house that the speaker is costing the taxpayer a whooping sum of 88 million dollars. The speaker, when you go to the internet, the speaker is 32 million dollars. We have civil pattern and military party. And, this, and, 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 yes. and, and we sat down, my team sat down with the manufacturers, and this is what we came up with. There, there, there are different issues. And normally for, for a new aircraft, there is a provision for about two or three years spares backing. This has also been taken care of the configuration that has to be done, they are not matters of dispute. It's the basic that we are talking about. And the SAA, Mr. Speaker, he knows that the capacity of that one is even 112 and not 114 that we are talking about. He knows that. He knows that. The engine capacity is the same. So it cannot be, Mr. Speaker, he's not disputing the basic price. He's talking about the configuration which is acceptable. The configuration, the reconfiguration is acceptable. Order. It will certainly Order. come with additional cost. What we are dis disputing is the sheer cost. Please note that the price of the aircraft may vary depending upon customized specifications. And together with information from the best possible source. <laughs> Not all of them Order. is official. Order. In case Order. we with the representation that comes across such specs or pricing, you feel you can give us more authoritative figure, please do so. Mr. Speaker, this being a document from the Honorable Deputy Minority Leader that raised this very crucial point. Once we are using the same document and it introduces this particular specific things, the burden is that you are now talking about the quantum of the specifications. Perhaps if anybody is beginning to indicate that all these reconfigurations and other additions does not amount to the difference between the 32 and what has been quoted there, then perhaps that is where the debate lies. However, the will of the majority prevailed, following a massive eye vote by popular acclamation. Great. So, uh, the videos you just saw going from the last was the debate in Parliament um, sometime, I believe, in July 2011 when the deal um, was being discussed in Parliament. And 
Also, you heard from uh, Mr. Felix Ofosukwachi, former Minister for Information there also, you know, stating um, his thoughts on the issue, indicating that uh, the documents that emerged during the course of the week, which brought you know, this whole discussion about, uh, do not disclose the identity of persons. The first video we saw was um, the press conference uh, by the NPP, where the party's communications director, Honorable Yabwabi Asama, was addressing, you know, <coughs> the, the media, where he categorically stated that, you know, from the perspective of the NPP, government official one, as um, referred to in the UK um, DPA, is none other than former President John Dramani Mahama. So that's where we are at uh, on these issues. Uh, we'll be looking at that. Um, I think I will start. I wanted to start from a neutral. <laughs> I don't know to state, but I guess let me start. Um, let me start with you, Bobby. Rather. Okay. Let me go to. <laughs> let me go to Gab uh, Gary. But I'm neutral. <laughs> oh please, okay. I'm well, I leave that to the people to judge. I'm I neutral. you heard the introduction. Yes. I mean, your introduction. What did I say? NPP legal, the legal team and uh, constitutional you. team. Very well. So it doesn't make me non-neutral. We are going to stay the facts. We shall see and debate the law. That's fine. We shall see. So <laughs> let's let's. You you your party has put out that statement saying that well, government official one is none other than um, uh, former President John Dramani Mahama. <coughs> The NDC, prior to your press conference, had actually issued a statement signed by the former Attorney General, um, Madame Maria Tabu, a Pierre Pong, who had categorically stated that, you know, <coughs> it says, let me, let me get that part. It says, uh, the reports are legend that Airbus SE paid bribes during the administration of President John Evans Mills and John Dramani Mahama are false misleading and do not reflect the approved judgment. Indeed, the approved judgment of the Crown Court of Southwark approving the DPA uh, between Airbus and the UK Serious Fraud Office does not allege that any payment was made by Airbus to any Ghanaian government <laughs> official. It is therefore a gross distortion for the media to conclude that <coughs> officials of the Ghana government between 2009 and 2015 were bribed or paid any commissions by Airbus for the acquisition of the CASA C-295 aircraft. Yet, you know, you have gone out there and categorically, you know, put out I'm not, let me say good morning so to you. Good morning, morning to mm -hmm. our honorable co-panelists. I think that uh, this week has been a quite a turbulent week. <laughs> and let me indicate that the statement by the former Attorney General clearly is not a reflection of the judgment which was written in plain English language which all of us, even whether you're a lawyer or you're a non-lawyer, you can read and understand the contents of the English language in which the judgment was written. Now, Abna, if you listened to the playback of the parliamentary debate in 2011, clearly you realize that the deal was pushed through with a majority in parliament. You saw the resistance of the minority then, <coughs> now majority, in respect of the, 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 the value for money, the price of the aircraft, and yet they push it through and indicate that, look, whether you like it or not, we are the majority and we are going to push it through. And time, they say, can't tell. 2011, now we are in 2020. About nine years or so down the line, we are now being confronted <coughs> with a judgment of the supplier and the SFO admitting that indeed they paid some monies which were bribes intended to retain or to obtain business through uh, Agent 5 to, for onward delivery to Agent 1. Now, Abra, this is very, very, very interesting judgment. You know why? Because the person or the entity that has been complained about as having used certain intermediary to, 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 to pay money 
did not or did not in any way say that I did not pay the money. That's very interesting. It tells you that there were some documents available which they were confronted with and they could not deny. That as a matter of fact, these monies were actually paid through them for more delivery for the purchase of the aircraft. And as a matter of fact, the aircraft were purchased. The aircraft were purchased. The monies were paid for the business. And indeed, the business came into fruition. So what were you talking about? The quick pro quo. Quick pro quo. I give you A. I want to get B. The B has actually been, you know, materialized. What then are we talking about here? But the, the, and they the, the, did not. Just a minute. So yes. the, the, the NDC statement position is that mm -hmm. nowhere in the set judgment, you know, is mention made of specifically any Ghanaian government official as having taken a bribe. First so, of all, Abna, first of all, that is why the President, His Excellency, has also referred the matter for further investigation in this country. So we can find out who is government of Oshawa. But pending that, even before that, your party has gone ahead to say, well, it's none other than former you President see, John Drummond. You, 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 see, you see, the period, the, the, period, the period under review, the period under review, if you look at what they said, 2009, 2011, 2015, the period under review, who are those in charge? Who are those in charge? I'm not going to see to mention anybody's name, but who are those in charge? Who was government official one? I mean, who are those in charge? No. Yeah, and then that's the point. Your party has already named I, that I, person. I, so are you saying I, then that? Saying but again, that. you're saying it's been referred to the OSP for investigation. So, I mean, that puts it in a, you know, like we're saying one thing, but again, we're saying, you know. No, 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 no. It's going to be investigated mm -hmm. to, in, to find out that whether or not indeed. These monies that have been admitted by Airbus, that they actually paid these bribes to induce business, to get business for, from Ghana, whether indeed they also receive the money. Or these are matters of public, high public interest. Because you see, like I rightly said, Airbus did not pay the money for nothing. They were paying these monies to obtain business from Ghana, mm. to sell their aircrafts. Three aircrafts. And you see the debate in Parliament. The debate was so turbulent because they were saying, look, we think that the cost has been inflated. And therefore, in our view, do not go ahead to purchase this aircraft. So we, we must find out whether there has been financial loss caused to the state as a result of the purchase of the, of the aircraft. Whether indeed certain persons who were in charge of the public purse received certain favors, certain inducements, certain monies to obtain or to give out business to these Airbus. Mm. But what is interesting, Airbus themselves did not say that they did not give the money. They say, yes, we agree, we admit that we pay these monies. Now the question is for us to find out whether or not these monies were indeed also what, received by these officials. Okay. You get a point. So for now, I think that when the president says he's going to refer to special political for further investigation, I agree with him mm. entirely. Because we must find out whether public money was used for the purpose which it was intended, whether public money has been dissipated, whether people receive any inducement to now ensure that certain monies which were not meant to be paid to certain people were actually paid. Right. It's very, very important that we find out all these things. Very well. Because if you look at the facts mm -hmm. and the particulars of the offense here, which eventually I want to read out, mm -hmm. you will see clearly that they said between July 1 and 2011, 2015, Airbus SE failed to prevent persons associated with it from bribing others concerned with the purchase of military transport aircraft by government of Ghana, where the said bribery was intended to obtain or retain business or advantage in the conduct of business from Airbus S. Mm. These are very, very crucial matters for us to delve into. Very well. Out. And, and, and we shall get into that. Let me turn to Honorable um, Aladji Inza Fusini here to, to take your view on this. Um, Honorable, so... In, as indicated earlier, uh, the NDC through Madame Marietta Brewer Pierre Paul earlier on in the week issued this statement. Now, um, I've looked at it. Question is, 
given the facts that we have or the statements of fact that we have in the UK judgment as well as the US judgment, would you say that this statement as issued is sufficient to deal with the kinds of content that we have in there where yes no names have been mentioned but there are facts that have been established that indeed during this period certain things happen so to come and just say that well no government official received bribes um, the statement put out there or as uh, it's a gross distortion for the media do you think that this statement or this denial if you like denial without any facts stating or setting out exactly what happened during the period, particularly when, indeed, the people who were um, at the helm of affairs are the ones, you know, or that is that, that's the period within which we are, we are looking at. These people have the facts, if any, to counter what has been established in these judgments. Do you think this statement is good enough the way it is? Abno, let me, first of all, thank you for inviting me to be part of this very important discussion. Right. And to extend my felicitations to my co-panelists. <coughs> Indeed, it is very interesting listening to lawyers arguing on this matter. <coughs> the judgment of the court, the court of Southwick, is dated the 31st day of January 2020. Mm -hmm. The first time MPP held their press conference was on a Monday, two days after the judgment had been released. Indeed, and I'm convinced, I'm convinced beyond doubt that at the time they released the judgment, the, their press conference, they had not read the judgment. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, because their press conference was not born out of the judgment. And I'm talking about the judgment of, in the Crown Court of Southwark, mm -hmm. and presided over by Right Honourable Dan Victoria Sharp. Right. That's the judgment I'm talking about. <clears throat> now, Mer Merita Opon's statement mm -hmm. was largely <coughs> a state of position, not mm -hmm. a defence. And this is not under trial. His Excellency John Draman and Mahmoud's government is not under trial. But it is so important that when the media simply went to town on distortions largely motivated by press conferences and pronouncement by the uh, MPP, there was a need to set this, the, the, to set state of position. But the media started, you know, interrogating this issue even before the MPP's press conference. So that is when they on that is their when own the media got the judgment before the MPP. I mean, it was brought out on a certain day, but I'm saying that the press conference held by the NPP was on well, a Monday. But prior to that, the discussion was no, already The media started, did not run so ahead of the MPP. I'm taking my intervention from the point that I had a press conference. Mm. I didn't hear anything from the media until I had a press conference. And that's where I'm starting. Okay. No, first of all, there is no mention of any name. Not even employees of Airbus mm -hmm. in the judgment. No. And they did that for good reason. Well, it's captured in, yeah. in paragraph 13. If you Google paragraph 13, I see that you have it on I your... I have it, yeah. It, it, for good reason. Mm -hmm. when you, because the people are not standing mm -hmm. criminal mm -hmm. trial, mm -hmm. when you mention their names, you violate sure. their rights. And it's so in Ghana. Sure. Without being heard. You are being heard. It's so in Ghana. Record of proceedings is coming up. Please, please. <laughs> it's so in Ghana. So when I hear lawyers, in fact, I was on a program with Baba Samo and I was hugely disappointed. When I hear lawyers struggling to name names and allowed persons who in their own personal idiosyncratic view have committed offenses and they are putting names there for people to try them. They ask, what, what has happened to us? Have, have something taken over our senses? Even in court, Abna, and I'm happy you are a lawyer. When you bring witnesses, they don't mention witnesses by their names. 
because they shouldn't be associated with the case and condemned. So we say it's PW1. If it's a defense witness, we say it's a DW1. We don't. Okay, but this one, they say, well, do you know? <laughs> the true speculative, uh, 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 what, uh, what uh, uh, activities engaged by the MPP and their director of communications, they somehow, even in <laughs> law, in law, when you are using speculation as the basis of evidence, and if you in the Republic, <laughs> they must irresistibly lead to one conclusion. But would you say this is speculation or inferences? No, no, it's speculation. Inferences, I mean, no, 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 it's speculation. Are allowed. You are not, inferences are deductive. Are allowed. Are Reasonable inf no. inferences, what I'm saying right? Is, inferences are logical deductions. Yes. So you must have a premise. Upon established, established facts. facts. And they are then, then established you facts in your here. Inferences. But the there are established facts in here. But there are no, are no the established facts. Are no, you're saying there are no established facts. There are no established facts. Okay. The established facts are what? Let's all go over. I mean, in law... Yes. And now we are not reducing this program to law. Not at all. I, I, yeah. Because I we are four like lawyers on this class. Uh, <laughs> so no. Now, first of all, yeah. as a lawyer, your first major assignment when you read the judgment is to do what? Is to brief sure. the judgment. The brief facts. So let me try to give you the brief facts. Mm -hmm. The brief facts in this case are that Airbus wanted to sell their aircraft to Ghana. They had information that Ghana needed military transport aircraft. They constituted <coughs> business partners. That is, they constituted persons who they named as their business partners right. and commissioned them to look at the market for the aircraft in Ghana. The business agents would be paid commission only upon success. So success-based commission. If they didn't sell an aircraft, they would not be paid. After the business agents had been commissioned by Airbus, Airbus by themselves commissioned another due diligence experts mm -hmm. to do due diligence on them. So Airbus were taking steps to ensure that the property was being done. Right. During the due diligence, uh, 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 in the due okay. diligence report, it was established that one of the business partners, specifically Intermediary 5, had close relations with a high, a high government, highly high elected ranking government, high yeah. government elected officer. Yeah. They named him GO1, Government Official so one. 1. Now, by OECD rules, where a person is to retain business for you and has been constituted into an agent and that person bears close relations with the decision maker, that infringes the OECD rules. Why? I don't know whether you've ever heard of the Financial Action Tax Force Group, FATF. Under FETF, especially, especially Regulation 17, said persons had called politically exposed persons. So, because of the closeness, it could lead to an inappropriate exercise of a decision in favor of Airbus. So, when the, when the report came, Airbus by themselves did what? Terminated the agreement. And then constituted mm. an uh, 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 eight, uh -huh. which is a Spanish military and defense company, uh -huh. to take up the matter. Uh -huh. Now, the, the, Spanish, the, the Spanish defense and military company took up the matter. But before they took up the matter, certain things happened. Like and, what? And th that is also listed like or stated here. Mm -hmm. Like what? So, and uh, is it paragraph 53? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where it talks about the fact that it's, um, that false documentation uh, was created by or with the agreement of Airbus employees in order to support and disguise these payments, the payments that were made, right? And says the payments were intended to induce or reward, quote, improper favor 
by government official one towards Airbus. Then it says payments were eventually stopped due to the arrangement failing the due diligence processes required, which is what you're saying. <laughs> so prior to that, some things had happened. The question is, were those wrongdoings on the part of government official one, who we are yet to find out exactly who that person well, is. So that is, so that is also an established no, no, fact no. we need Abner, to look at. Abner. Who did the documentation? Ghana? Ghana did the documentation? Everybody you just, you just <laughs> read it. Ghana did the documentation? No answer. You, you just carry on. You make your statement. You make your point. <laughs> Ghana had no role uh -huh. whatsoever in the documentation that was done by Airbus. Uh -huh. constituted. But the payments were made, nonetheless. Ghana had no role in payment to the intermediaries. Ghana paid Airbus. Not the payments to the intermediaries, but the payments for or intended to induce or reward. Ghana had no role in okay. the payment intended to induce. I know, but I'm, I'm not saying Ghana had a role in the payments the, to the, anybody. The I'm saying paid. that we have a statement that says the payments were not, intended reading, to induce or reward I improper that, favor I think that by in government law school, official. We were told that <laughs> you must read the judgment as, as a whole, a and I'm doing that. Yes, <laughs> so, it so looks like you're also <laughs> focusing on one side. No, no focus. Yeah. I was I was leading you on mm -hmm. the brief facts, sure. and then you jumped to false documentation. Yeah, but those the, are also the judgment itself facts. tells you that two senior employees of Airbus were responsible for the false documentation. That's it. You got you got I, that. I totally agree. Ooh. That does, so yes. who first? Okay, so let me continue. Then, then, the Spanish company came to Ghana mm. and signed. An agreement with the government of Ghana. In the Spanish agreement, it was recited on the agreement. You saw it in the judgment that the agreement complied with the OEC rules and that commission payments. So even the agreement, the purchase agreement, acknowledged that commission payments will be made, but that those commission payments must not exceed three million zero zero one uh, uh, euros. Okay, and we signed. We paid Airbus. Airbus, we paid the Spanish company. The Spanish company, then, because of arrangements, internal arrangements between them and Airbus senior executives and whoever was involved, they did transfers. There is no evidence whatsoever that any of the monies that they paid, that is the total amount of money of 3,001,000 euro any of that amount was rich and not to them very well no that, such that, evidence. that your, your point i There's think your, no your, such evidence. your preliminary um, Do, comments <laughs> ha have been made thank you let me go no, no, we'll be no, 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 just take it easy because we are looking i know but that's and fine that is, and, and two let me state this point i've heard people say three billion euros was airbus three billion mm. the total amount of money that we're talking here in connection with ghana was 100 million euros the total amount of money, which was a subject matter of investigation, had to do with two. We bought three aircrafts. Mm -hmm. Had to do yes, with two. Yes, looked aircrafts. at the two. Yes, yes. With two aircrafts. Yeah. And the total amount of money involved was 66 million euros. Mm -hmm. Right. And the fine. I, and we, the fine. we, let me, let no, me move the fine. to. The no, 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 just a minute. I think, no, 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 Gary, Gary, please. The fine, fine was, know, was they, let's they, hear from what the they did panelists. was that they took the, uh, the you let's know, by the OECD rules, when that thing happens, what you have gotten is what we call in Ghana and just enrichment. Right. So they Very took well. it Very before well. they let me Let me go to Bobby quickly and then we'll, we'll have Mr. Sinanu as well. Bobby, what do you make of all this? I mean, um, the, the NDC says there's, there's no evidence or record to show that any monies were paid to um, any government official you know, during the period 2009-2015. The other side is saying, well, there is evidence on the record that suggests that. We don't know who government official one is, even though the NPP wants us to believe that it is former President Dramani Mahama. Before that is officially um, 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 established by, you know, I don't know who, maybe the um, OSP or, or whoever is, you know, made to look into this issue. We do have some facts, though, which we are looking at. From your perspective, 
what do you see? Is there anything on the record to suggest that certain things were done which shouldn't have been done? And I'm saying this in the context that we don't know who yeah. government official one is, or who intermediary five is, but from the facts as we have it, do you see any wrongdoings, potential wrongdoings? Well, I think any person who reads the judgment from the court would objectively would come to the conclusion that if not a wrongdoing happening, there was an attempt to influence the decision-making process mm -hmm. of purchasing the Airbus, uh, the aircraft for the military. That it's without dissent. Mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody would dispute the fact that there was at least an attempt to influence the decision-making process. Um, I would want to look at this issue slightly away from the political colorization of it. Well, I, I like uh, Senior Fusini said, that when you are talking about circumstantial evidence, the conclusion must lead to only one and one irresistible, irresistible thing. Yes. Yeah. My only doubt, or the only possible doubt for me, that it could have been the ex-president Mahama, because if you read the report, it says that the discussions or the, these transactions started between 2009 and 2015. Um, I don't think in 2009, Vice President Mahama was an elected government official. Why not? Because I didn't see that he was voted for as vice president. But the constitution makes that, you know, by... See, I stand to be corrected. If you, if you look at... Saying if you could assist me. Yeah, but let's... Let, let, okay, I think I, I, I took, the I took the trouble... The is deemed to have been elected. To have been elected. Exactly. So, so the then technically... So what, is is that, what is saying that technically yes. he was not a ballot paper? But the constitution says... Says that, that he's deemed to have been exactly. elected. So then we would assume that then... He is elected. Okay, then... I mean, when you look at the oath, of the vice president. No, I just wanted that, that, that clarity. So that if, if yeah. he's deemed to be elected, then he squares fully within the suspicion. But it all comes down to suspicions. I, I would want to move away. Suspicion. Is it, if Let him the, speak. The, I, I would want <laughs> to move away from the, the, the yes, politicization exactly. to another aspect of it. The, the, the judgment states clearly that all these officials are known to the United States government. Yeah. It's stated in there. Now, I ask myself, what stops the United States or what stops the government of Ghana from requesting uh -huh. the United States government to give us this information? And the OECD convention was referred to. Uh -huh. I have looked at it. I'm not sure Ghana is a signatory to that convention uh -huh. on no, the Ghana bribery. Is. Ghana is. Well, on their site, mm -hmm. as at this morning, mm -hmm. it did not list Ghana, Ghana. as yeah. a as not not the OEC convention as a whole, yeah. but this one on the bribery. Okay, okay. You know this one, this particular um, 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 offense, mm. four square. They have they have the general mm -hmm. OECD convention, and they have the one on anti-bribery and corruption. Right. Okay, that one Ghana is not a signatory to, mm. because it is that one that ent entitles member countries to ask for this kind of information mm. from the other countries that have it. So you'd see that the, the, the investigations was done principally between the United Kingdom, France, and the United the States. And these three countries are signatories to that particular convention on the bribery and then the corruption, mm. anti-bribery and corruption. And so if Ghana was a signatory, it would have been just, it would have been very easy for Ghana to have requested that, give us that information. information. Let us make it public as it were, mm -hmm. and then we'll start the investigation mm -hmm. from that angle, or whatever needs to be done, what's to be done. Whatever spin you put on it, there was an attempt to influence a decision-making process. And from the, 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 the video you played during the parliamentary de debate on it in 2011, it was very obvious that the minority then had cause to believe that we were not getting a value for money in terms of the cost okay. of the aircraft. Right. Um, I have read some of the reports which allegedly have made reference to the hazard for that day. Mm. And the question that was asked by Papa Uswan Kuma, I believe, was that who did the due diligence report on behalf of the Ghana government in, and the value for money analysis in respect of this purchase? And the response he got was that it has been done. Where is the copy of it? We don't have it. Now, you see this report coming out to say that the attempt, and this is where I, I depart slightly from the analysis by Mr. Uh, Honorable Fuseni, 
the, the first attempt was by Airbus <laughs> to deal directly with government official one. Mm -hmm. Directly. Was it an attempt or no, that no, it actually no, happened? I'm, because I'm it says a that, point. Yeah, that is right. why I use the word attempt. Okay. I'm building a point. Was to deal with government official one directly. Mm. And then later, government official five came in. Intermediary five. Yes. No, intermediary five. Mm. Sorry. Intermediary so five. Are, okay, so yes. number five. <laughs> Number no, five, what, what intermediary five. Of the, of the yes, 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 yes. 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 Well, which, which the U.S. Let's let's refer one. to the U.S. Yes. judgment. So yes, I have okay. that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Says, judgment said that there yeah. was a direct, direct discussion initially. with government official one. Yes. Mm. Directly. Yeah. Mm. Between Airbus and government official one. Yeah. Directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then the subsequently, yes. intermediary one. five came in as a conduit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Let's and let me get that for you. But carry on, please. And then. When they submitted the, the whole transaction for their to compliance on this anti-bribery mm -hmm. and corruption thing, mm -hmm. they said this person or the shareholders of the company mm -hmm. that had been incorporated as the agents, mm -hmm. let me use the word loosely, yeah. for this transaction, mm -hmm. were close relatives of existing government officials. Mm -hmm. And so the transaction or the between the Airbus and that agency would not meet the anti-bribery right. corruption test. Okay, so I found it. Let me mm -hmm. just okay. read that. So this is paragraph 135 of the U.S. Uh, yes. judgment. It says, between 2009 and 2016, mm -hmm. and here they refer to Governor Fisher one as individual one. Mm -hmm. So individual one, a citizen of Ghana, was a high-ranking elected government official in Ghana during the relevant ITAR yeah, ITA mm -hmm. time period. Mm -hmm. Beginning in or around 2009, a few months after individual one took office, Individual one was in direct and mm -hmm. repeated contact with senior Airbus executives mm -hmm. from both the Defense and Space Division and SMO International, mm -hmm. um, International about Airbus sales campaigns. Mm -hmm. exactly. Individual one was influential in having the government of Ghana approve aircraft purchases mm -hmm. and individual one contacted Airbus mm -hmm. senior executives during the government approval process. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say to 2011 during individual one's time in office, the Ghanaian parliament approved the purchase of two C29295 aircraft. So there was I look a direct, for the part that yeah. says a conduit so there that was we get that as well. Yeah. Direct communication. Mm -hmm. you are, you are, no, that you is reading, the UN judgment. You are reading, look, Oh, you, well, that you, are reading, you are reading oh, you too are. much okay. into Please contact. let me make no, 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 no. this point. There, yes. was, there, was, there was a direct yes. communication. Uh, mm -hmm. Ambassador... Oh, okay. okay. Please, 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 Number five, sure. whether individual or government official or intermediary, depending on which sure. of the judgments you are reading, was brought in. Mm. He incorporated the company to be the agent and receive the commission, as it were. Right. Now, when the agreement between the agent and Airbus was submitted to Airbus' own internal checks, they said the shareholders the of this company, which is supposed to be agents, are close relatives of no, the shareholder, the sh not shareholder. Okay, the there shareholder. Was, there was only one British. Yeah, and he was intermediary five. Yes, that is he was I'm intermediary saying. five. That shareholders. Okay. Okay. So, so shareholder, shareholder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a shareholder. A okay. Shareholder. So what? Yeah, the social it's shareholder. It's a close relative. Mm -hmm. No, no, not shareholder. Yes. There were three persons who incorporated Company D. Okay. One, a person who was British but of Ghanaian ancestry, right. and two British. Wise. Sure. Okay. So it's in respect of the one so, with the Ghanaian ancestry. Yes, we're talking were about, closely yeah. related, or was closely Closely related was to government official, and I want to assume one. Sure. Okay. It says so. Government now, official. Now, yeah. because of that, the, they said you cannot do the transaction with this particular sure. company. Please hold mm. your thoughts on that. We need to take a break. When we come back, we will continue with that. I know. <laughs> we will, but you see, we need to comply with the rules as well. So we'll take a break. When we come back, Bobby would, you know, continue with the submission, and then we'll take Mr. Senenu's um, initial okay. perspectives as well. This is the key points. Please stick and stay, Bobby. Don't forget. <laughs> You're watching and listening to The Key Points live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online at 3news.com. 
also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So currently we're looking at the Airbus scandal and matters arising. Bobby was making his submissions when uh, we had to take that break. So I'll just go back to him to, okay. you know, wrap so up on I, that. I had, I had stated and he had confirmed from reading the American judgment that the government official one had direct dealings yep. with Airbus officials. Then number five, whether intermediary or depending on which one you're reading, mm. came in to be the conduit between government official one and Airbus, mm -hmm. incorporated a company that was meant to be the agency to do this deal right. on commission basis. Now, when the agreement between Airbus and this agency, which I think is company D or so, mm -hmm. was submitted to Airbus's internal compliance checks, they rejected it and said the share one or the one of the mm -hmm. shareholders was closely related to a highly placed gam government official, official. One, individual and one. so they cannot do the transaction with him sure. now if you read the american judgment it states categorically that to circumvent that was the way that was used mm -hmm. to circumvent this they contacted a spanish company to do this transaction right and so the spanish company did not just come in merely because there was a refusal to deal with the company D. They so were brought intention. in just to circumvent that. And it, the American judgment stated very yeah. clearly. And then it went further to state that whatever monies that were paid to the Spanish agency, part of it ended up being with the company D. So if you look at the narration, <coughs> government official one dealing directly with Airbus, government official one says, go and deal with company D and a shareholder of company D is directly related to me. So it's like there's a, a veil. Go and deal with company D. Now, you can't deal with company D because of your internal checks. Let's go and deal with a Spanish company. The money ends up into company D or with company D. You can only assume by extension, parity of reasoning, mm -hmm. that whoever government official one is would have directly or indirectly benefited from this. Now, if government official one was in a position to influence the decision to purchase the aircraft... And it says so that government official one was, influ I mean, like, held, um, was very influential in that decision. Then there's Basically, a problem. Yeah. My problem is not only the fact that it's government official one. Mm -hmm. My problem is that it goes to, to fester the perception we have about how our parliament sometimes, right. sometimes conduct now, yeah. these businesses sure. because this is purely an international business transaction which would have to seek prior parliamentary approval right and indeed there was prior parliamentary approval mm. the question that was asked by the minority then is that where is the value for money analysis sure. you see these are businessmen airbus will not throw money away mm -hmm. of course. for nothing for nothing oh, if right. whatever money they use in securing this business would go into their cost Definitely, they will not do it for free. Mm -hmm. We are talking about, Honorable said, 100 million um, dollars or euros. Euro. 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 Mm -hmm. That ended up being in the hands of agents. Yeah, but the 100 million euro, no, not agents. No. The 100 euro, million euro was the cost of three aircrafts. Oh, sorry. I thought that was because the, I, I know that no. the commissions paid were 1 million. I read no, no, 1 million. The commission paid was 3, 3 million. Point. And then zero zero one for the first transaction or the both because there were two. No, trans there were two transactions. Yes, two aircrafts uh, were. Both. Very well, Bobby. I think you should wrap up for me, so I take. Yes. Me so what I'm saying is that if this three million euros mm -hmm. plus was it added to the cost mm. of the aircraft? Those are questions we need to interrogate. Could we have yeah. paid less for the cost of the aircraft? Sure. Exactly. Because we know that Airbus will not throw this money away. Very well. And if the judgment is very clear that these monies were paid to for lack of a better word, let me say, attempt to influence mm. the decision-making mm. process, mm. then it means that the government of Ghana has been shortchanged. Right. I mean, now, now to end. Sure. You see, some countries have received compensation. I know some of the countries that have been mentioned have started asking for their part of mm. the compensation that have been paid, or whether or not they are also entitled to compensation. I think that is where the argument eventually should end. Mm. Because if you have come to bribe our officials, to influence a decision-making process. It means that we are also entitled, because United States, United Kingdom, and France did not directly lose any money. Yet they are the ones collecting this 3 billion euros compensation. Mm -hmm. Why are the countries that suffered or that 
may have lost money. Let me use my mm. word carefully. May have lost money, not fighting for this compensation. Right. And it is because Ghana is not a signatory to, the to that bribery yeah. and corruption OECD convention. convention. So I think this should be an opportunity for the government of Ghana to push that agenda for us to sign that. Very well. Because this is not the first. We have Mabi and Johnson. Exactly. We that also that. okay. Yes. And we didn't we didn't get anything from it. Sure. So we, we definitely questions uh, that need to be answered and, you know, matters that need to be pursued. But to your question, whether or not Government of Oshawan was influential, um, let me just quickly make reference to that. At paragraph 135 of the U.S. judgment, it says... Um, Individual one was influential in having the government of Ghana approve aircraft purchases and individual one contacted Airbus senior executive during the government approval process. So that is to confirm the you know, level of influence there. But Mr. Senanu, well, what you. do you make of all of this? Uh, fortunately, I'm not constrained by all the legalese that has <laughs> gone on. And I think that you've done a, a beautiful job of trying to dig into this. Mm. On the international scene, the reputation of Ghana has suffered another hit. And I think that I speak for most Ghanaians when I say this is something that is very painful. We should not be spending time trifling over whether it's party A or party B. The narrative itself is very suggestive. When you say high-ranking elected officer, it already begins to tell a story. I would like to focus much more on the reference that the president has made to the okay. office of the special prosecutor yeah. and say that the swiftness with which that happened, that was good. We wish that would happen in all such similar instances. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, we are currently not assured of how quickly the office of the special prosecutor can deliver on this. We are not assured of whether he has the logistics in terms of the manpower, we are not sure whether he has a capacity to assess the resources he needs. And since as Ghanaians, we want this to be very transparent. We would like to see the presidency take many more steps and say, look, we're going to engage the office of the special prosecutor to say, what do you need to do this? Do it quickly. So all of us have closure. But what the office of the special prosecutor needs, I think the government knows. The, 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 the well, I'm, I'm, I'm being has emphatic. made that known consistently. Yes, absolutely. And I'm just trying to say that we are not satisfied by just the referral. Right. We want to see a more robust attempt to engage and tell us, look, <coughs> we are ensuring that this man has everything it, it takes to deliver on this, to do it quickly, because we know that Ghanaians are finding this. It's just becoming one case too many mm. in the public space. Now, on the international level. So... I don't think that it is so much about, okay, let's look at the narrative. Is it uh, uh, intermediary five, official one? No. It's not for me whether it is MPP or NDC. Something has gone wrong. Mm. Any objective, independent, right-minded Ghanaian will say, <laughs> let's do a thorough investigation. It's been referred to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. What do we need to do to ensure that it is done and done quickly? Right. When we know the outstanding cases, he has not reported on, the office has not seemed to deliver, and it's not for a lack of competence of the, of the man that we have put there. So there's something definitely not going on right. In fact, when we were establishing that office, we had four things in mind, if I remember right. The competency of the individual, experience or integrity, the independence of the office, whether architecture allowed that office to be independent, and ring fencing finances so they could take their decisions and move on. I think the first two probably we have. But the last two, is it really independent? Is it able to get the resources it needs to deliver? We don't see that happening. Mm. So I think that the presidency needs to do much more if we really want to get to the bottom of this case. Yeah. And we want a transparent process, okay. stage by stage. Let's be informed. This is what has happened. We've managed to get all the documentation from the U.S. and the U.K. Let Ghanaians begin to have confidence that we are not just playing one of those games where we're going to sweep it under the carpet in a couple of weeks and hope that, oh, it's an election year. Let's get back to political campaign and see what we want to do. Mm. That's my take. Very well. Now, Honorable Fuseni, yes. clearly, you know, there's the need to investigate. I mean, it's in everybody's interest, particularly persons who at the moment are at the receiving end of, you know, uh, entities like the NPP that are saying, well, it's, 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 it's nobody but 
um, is no other person than uh, um, 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 former President John Dramani Mahama. So obviously, it's in everybody's interest that we investigate this matter and bring some finality to it, so that persons involved, if indeed you know the investigations lead us to a point where we need to prosecute, they would have their day in court, they would be heard, and whatever orders the courts would make would be made, and then we see you know some finality brought to it, as I said. The question then is, and this is what uh, you know, uh, Mr. Um, Senanu has brought to the fore, the capacity of the Office of the Special Prosecutor to even take on this thing. And before we even look at the capacity of the Office of the Special Prosecutor to do this in terms of logistics and whatever it is, question is the propriety mm -hmm. of the person, Mr. Martin Amidu, to take on this you know, matter, given the fact that um, he was a government official himself during the period under review, if you like. You're looking at, you know, the time where he was the Attorney General. I think he was, was also, um, was, did, did he, ex, yeah, some other, you know, position as well. So, looking at these um, factors, do you think it is proper for, you know, him to continue with or to even take on this investigation in the first place? Governor, the President was seized with all these facts you are mentioning. <laughs> and referred the matter to the special prosecutor. Or did he think, it, did you, you think that he did it without thinking? No, well, he's done it. I'm looking, <laughs> he's done that, but so I'm why asking. why do you want me to assess the president? No, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a fair question, isn't it? Do you think it is, because well, I mean, yes, he's done the referral, but. Let me tell you that. I share in the views expressed by Senator. Mm. Talking of media is not investigation. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is important to establish threatens. Was there wrongdoing on the part of any government official, whether he be government official one or a member of parliament who was part of the delegation to visit Airbus? It should be established. If there was wrongdoing, assuming there was wrongdoing, did any person benefit inappropriately from the wrongdoing? You establish that as a matter of fact. And three, whether or not the aircrafts that we purchased were secured at value. Right. It's very important that we do sure. it. Talking on air, and yeah. I'm putting out mm -hmm. what I know. I was in Parliament. I've been 14 years in Parliament. Yeah, and yeah. I know as a matter of fact. Good job. I know, and I know that, you see, three aircrafts were bought. Mm -hmm. The two were compromised because of the involvement of Intermediary 5. The third aircraft arrived in Ghana on the 4th of December 2015. Okay. Now, the agreement was approved. The agreement for the third contra uh, aircraft was approved on 25th of March 2015 in Parliament. The aircraft, the last one and the two earlier ones, were bought at the same price. Okay. I also know as a matter of fact that the money for the agreement for the aircraft was taken as a loan but the loan was to be repaid by the united nations now so even the united nations should be interested sure. whether paying back money to this country for peacekeeping operations was used for purposes other than what it was said to be mm -hmm. used for all of us in ghana must be interested sure. i simply do not want I will feel hurt. That's why sometimes when I'm talking, I feel emotional. I'll feel hurt if I'm entitled to good, a good name. And somebody thinks exactly. that because I'm in politics, I'm not I entitled to a good name. Sure. I'll feel hurt. Sure. And so, let's bring it on. Right. Right. Kufa, it, bring it, it on. In bringing it on, question is, is the OSP there? The OSP, the OSP, the OSP we passed the law. And then yes. we invited stakeholders like Senator Nkou to come and help us. The OSC has capacity to invite anybody. What about to he collaborate? being yes. a former yes. official yes. of that government during the, the period? The OSC do you think can that then would, say. Do you think that we, would affect anything? You see, you say OSP. It's an office. Yes. yes. I'm looking at the person occupying the position of special prosecutor. The OSP can then say, in view of the fact that the head of the OSP was part of the administration that is not accused of engaging in wrongdoing, mm -hmm. The OSP would contract XYZ to do the investigating for it. That's fine. He can do that. But I'm asking, I want to know, do you think that would be necessary? Or you think he, that, that Mr. Martin Amidu can be in charge? I, I know Martin Amidu since he was a deputy secretary in the Upper East Region. 
He was a diligent. When they appointed him, I was the first person, one of the first persons, persons to say that Nana Kuvado has done a good appointment. Mm. I know him very well. Mm. In fact, he was my, my father was a star witness in the case in Tamale. So, my treasurer really knows what to do in the circumstances. Okay, very well. Um, Gary, what do, you, what do you think? I mean, moving forward, clearly, I think now we've all established that there is the need to investigate. So, we are not going back to look at who government official one is and everything. But moving <laughs> forward, <laughs> how do we ensure? That because I know I know where the temptation <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. So question is, how do we deal with this and make sure that we get whatever you know traction we need to get in this uh, on this issue? Well, I think now the issue about he being a former official and all of that. Do you think that see, should I don't think, matter? I don't think that really will impair his ability to investigate. You see, what about opinion he gave at that time it was in his capacity as Attorney General the Office of Attorney General. Now, the OSP is an office. Mm -hmm. The OSP is not Martin Amidu. It's an office. If today Martin is not there, the office will still be there. You know, so I don't think that, and I've heard I mean, statements that he's conflicted. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has any personal interest, unless you can establish so, or any proprietary interest in what is, we are talking about here. What opinion he gave was in his capacity as Attorney General. Okay. So really, I, I, I do not see how he's conflicted or, or, or whether he be benefited personally or whether he's been accused or whatever. But mm -hmm. people have raised concerns anyway. But I don't see how, you know, basically he's, he's conflicted in the matter. Right. But if for some reason, um, 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 maybe uh, the, the, essentially the president will want to take a second look at it, that, that will you know, lie within his discretion. There could, there could be other options. Or that, like um, Honorable Fusini said, the OSP itself could say, well, I mean, they've done it before, mm -hmm. i.e., or that some other entity is working on something, they think it's theirs, so then they would say, well. <laughs> obviously, obviously, you, 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 obviously you, are, you are, you know. Obviously, there could be other options. There, sure. could, be, there could be a special investigative team mm -hmm. made up of, of people from BNI, Yoko, Data Dina, whatever it is, and then they could also investigate mm -hmm. it. There, you know, there could be a public hearing. Sure. Public hearing, yeah. like, more, more, like a commission of inquiry, yeah, to publicly, that. publicly hear the matter so on that national uh, television, on national, on te national, national television, <laughs> on a live show. As unravel who so that government official one of, is. Of yeah. One is, and then uh, Ghan, all Ghan, because of the huge public interest in the matter, mm -hmm. so every Ghanaian will know mm. that this person, government official one, is that person, he took XYZ, he did not take XYZ. So this matter is brought to a closure. Sure. But I don't see how the special prosecutor is impaired in any way to investigate the matter. Because well. I, I don't think there's any personal or proprietary interest yeah. in, 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 we, we, in whatever we have, he has done. Yeah, a few minutes to be wrap up on this conversation. But I would want us to look at the, the process of you know, parliamentary approvals and whether or not we as a state are getting the full benefit of the checks and balances you know, we have by the constitution put up to our benefit, whether indeed we are having that benefit. But um, Bobby, on the issue about um, Martin Amidu being you know, the proper person to isolate where carry on with well, this, I, given I, I the, think the, the, the we, This is not something I should, I'm proud to say, but I think that may be the reality on the grounds. The character and the personality, the strong personality of Mr. Amidu may not, in my infantile opinion, permit um, a dispassionate, if indeed, if indeed, and it's, it's the caveat is huge, if indeed it is because it is found out that he played any role in his official capacity, whether writing an opinion as attorney general on it, on the transaction, because I know before such transactions, sometimes they request an attorney general to write an opinion. If, for example, because I've heard that suggestions in some quarters, he wrote an opinion on the transaction. I don't know. He did. He did. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's may, the optics may not be too good right. if he's now coming to investigate something he gave an opinion on, albeit in his official capacity as Attorney General. And I, I, I would not be comfortable if we say, well, it is an office. So let the office deal with him. Let him, let him set, stand aside or let his office delegate the investigations to another entity. Mm. At, at the end of the day, the, if, he, if the office delegates, for lack of a better word, the report will come to him and he would have to look at it. Mm. So I think that... It's, it's one instance where I was not comfortable mm -hmm. when I heard that it's the special prosecutor who, who had been taxed. Um, well, the president has his own ways of investigating 
such issues. You know, right. I mean, when there are scandals like this, sometimes he says, I've cleared them. I have looked at it. <laughs> no, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. That but, but, but there's been instances no, where he has received the report. He no, I mean, he I said it in jest. What okay, I mean no, is so that maybe there he, could be other ways yeah. of investigating this. Okay, uh, I think he because there have been it. such, you know. So I am not comfortable for for this reason. Sure. Not so that he doesn't competence. have the capacity. No, no, no. It's got nothing to do sure. with his competence. Sure. Not at all. It's just that if indeed he gave an opinion on this transaction in his official cap because that opinion will be part of the documents mm -hmm. that will come up Definitely. for the record and right. for him to investigate himself second guessing his opinion and now saying okay maybe i should have asked a b c d and i didn't in that capacity it's it's not okay it's a bit very, yeah you maybe we could, do, we could do we could do a another point here's another point you see the 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 opinion obviously will not encapsulate any intended inducements mm. in the opinion. Definitely okay, not. not. As to the decision whether to acquire exactly. the aircraft the or not, and everything else. No, 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 I know. In respect of legal opinion. Mm -hmm. Documents before him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That will not encapsulate mm -hmm. any intended inducement. Mm -hmm. Any Absolutely. money that will be paid. I don't think conflicted. You understand? Okay, okay. Let me say this. Let me say this. stated his opinion, which is fine with him. I don't think the opinion of any attorney general would be to look at the business side of a transaction. Sure. I don't think that no. it's within the ambit of the Attorney mm. General to look at the business side of a transaction. Mm -hmm. It would be to look at the documentation before him. If there was an agency agreement mm -hmm. between, for example, if the document that came to him would say that, okay, this transaction is between Airbus and government of Ghana, would it have I'm disclosed? Not, I'm not. I know, just a minute. Yes. Just a question. Just a question. Sure. In the closure of the Unibank case, will this present Attorney General be competent to appear before a court of competent jurisdiction to give evidence. Mr. Sakufu? Yeah. Well. well. I don't know. <laughs> Not why, why, because... Because he's given an opinion. No, exactly. So, yeah. but so that, you see, but so you don't sure. talk as if, don't talk in the vacuum. There are, there's, there are a lot of precedents in mm -hmm. this country. That's why, I mean, no, that's why I said that's why you have said that it is not legally 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 was it disclosed at that time to the Attorney General giving the opinion that there was an intermediary or an agent? Whether Spanish or Ghanaian re company mm -hmm. related? All those, yes, definitely not. Okay, Looking so, at it, so it, it means that there may not have been full disclosure right. at that stage. Very well. Because That's right. perhaps I think if there was full disclosure, he would have done due diligence on either the Spanish company or the Ghanaian company to have seen that maybe there was a correlation between... I'm just saying. Sure. No, no, I, I do get your point. The yes. optics, I get it about yeah, the, the optics. I'm not saying it's he's not, not competent. No, 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 no that he doesn't optics. have the yeah. legal yeah. capacity. Which or is fine. Uh, no, 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 no. I, not I, I made that clear. That, that not is not what I'm saying. Okay. Not I'm not just saying that it is yeah. the optics, sure. the okay. perception. Sure. Okay. That's fine. But we just have barely like four minutes to go. And I want us to look at the issue about parliamentary approvals. Because at the thick of this whole thing is that we saw the playback of the debate in Parliament. And um, I will start with you, um, Mr. Sinanu. I mean, from civil society's perspective, I mean, we've always talked about, let's ensure that the checks and balances, you know, the architecture of the checks and balances in our constitution are to the benefit of, you know, the, everything. I, Honorable is, is, is laughing and all, but it's a very important issue. Consistently, we see the minority raise, you know, objections. The majority would definitely have its way. They say, flip the coin, then it happens differently. The minority would always raise issues, but the majority would definitely have their way. Abner, we Are cannot, we ever going to get we, to a we point where... We cannot run away yeah. from the need for the constitutional reforms mm -hmm. to reduce how the executive appoints and takes from parliament. Because all of that increases the compromise that we see. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are people who are just waiting to be appointed to deputy minister, to minister. Um, they are whipped into lines to say, look, take a particular position. And I don't think that this particular experiment is working the way we wanted it to. We need to make sure that parliament is as independent as it can. And in that sense, therefore, people can take decisions without feeling like the party is going to hold them accountable to ransom and so and so forth. So what we are seeing, is, is just a reflection of the architecture we have at the moment. 
And at some stage, we need to just come back and confront this situation and say, look, let's have a situation where parliament and the members of parliament can go about their duties objectively, take decisions, vote on them, without seeing the kind of thing we see, where they will just say, an eye is loud enough, and therefore it has gone through. Mm. What is the thinking behind it? Mm. That's not helpful. Right. So honestly, I agree with you. I'm just thinking that it goes beyond just having a discussion on it. There are specific issues and steps we need to take to make a change in what we are seeing in Parliament. And there, we have an MP here. So exactly. I, I'm so I'm sure going to leave, I'm going to to leave uh, yeah, he will have the last bite on this issue, mm -hmm. given that he's been in Parliament for how many years? 14 years, 14 you said? Years. And, yeah. and I mean, that's a wealth of knowledge we'd want to definitely dig into. So let me turn to the non-parliamentarians on my side as well. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yes. Yet. So Gary, this whole business <laughs> about, you know, <laughs> He's asking you to pick the phone. Well, we, we, we will find out. Time will tell, like they say. On a voting committee. Great. Okay. So, <laughs> parliamentary approvals and how that has fared over the years. Are we getting the benefits of, you know, this whole business about <coughs> parliament being, you know, serving as a check on the executive and all of that, ensuring that said, whatever it is that comes off, out of parliament is to the benefit of the country and not necessarily to the political party for which the um, think, members think, of parliament I think, I think represent. Gonna, or gonna, uh, by and large, I think we should all be, you know, be guided by our conscience. You see, if you are made a member of parliament, <coughs> um, you should be guided by the fact that, look, you are there to serve the people who put you there and to also make, make sure that they, they um, you do things that will serve the interests of, of the country. Unfortunately, to some extent, uh, if you look at what happened or what transpired in the midst debate, you will realize that uh, the minority then were pushing for value for money. They were insisting that, look, the transaction should not be okayed. But the majority then was also pushing with a year, year, insisting that the, 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 the deal ought to go through. And now we are even being confronted with several challenges nine years down the line after the transaction had gone through. Okay. I think that we should make sure that this so-called, you know, party whip, which sometimes, uh, uh, you know, does not make our MPs look and scrutinize properly the document before them, should be re-looked at. Right. Should be re-looked at. Okay. So that we should, so that whatever we do, our conscience, sure. the national interest should be the bedrock mm. of our actions and inactions in Parliament. Very well. Uh, Bobby, there's some question to you. question is, we, talk, we keep talking about value for money, value for money. It's, it's supposed to be an objective thing, but it looks like it's always from the subjective point of view. I mean, if it's a value for money, who is value you, for money? Exactly. But Honourable made a, a disclosure that it really interests me, and I think that it may change the colour of this discussion. Mm. Um, I've not seen that information come up in the public space. But like he said, he was he's, he was a member of mm, parliament that time. time. Yeah. Honorable said the money for that was paid by the United Nations, if I heard him right. Yes, yes. And it was a loan. Reimbursed by the United Nations. And I don't think the United Nations will pay that money without they doing their own value for money mm. analysis. Or oh, Honorable, yeah, that did yeah, not come up. Well, well, so I, I would want to wait. And Gary knows that. <laughs> I would want to wait and see because if it was I, I mean listening to this really it's very interesting if it was government of Ghana that was paying then you would say that because somebody would have benefited so he didn't care how much the country paid but if it is you when that was paying I want to be slow to conclude that the United Nations will okay. not pay for the aircraft without doing the value for money analysis but be that as it may, it's, 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 it's something that we should look seriously into going forward. Right. Even if uh, an independent agency will be taxed by the right. <laughs> parliamentarian, so we, it's, it should not be after the event, exactly. but yeah. before. I mean, we we should not wait until something has happened before we start talking about it. Right. It should be before. Right, sure. Uh, we need to take a break, but when we come back, we'll hear from um, Honorable Fusseini on this issue, and then we'll go into the issues about the missing excavators. Where did they go? We will try to understand exactly what is happening within that quarters where we are looking at fighting galamse in the country this is the key points please stick with us we'll be right back welcome back you're still watching and listening to the key points we're live on tv3 also live on 3fm 92.7 and online at tnews.com also on our facebook page tv3 ghana so moving on next we are looking at the missing excavators uh, about 
some 500 excavators that were seized from uh, some illegal miners uh, by the um, anti Galamse Task Force or the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining um, have gone missing. And it's quite an interesting issue because these are not, um, if you like, mobile phones we're talking about. We're talking about heavy duty, <laughs> <laughs> earth moving machinery. 500 of them to have gone missing like that is, 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 is quite interesting. It puts the issue about the guinea fowls flying to the Burkina. It, 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 it makes <laughs> that issue, it. I mean, totally, it lightens it, totally. This is major, and we are going to be looking at that issue. We will have, or let's take a listen to the argument so far played out between the NPP and DC on this issue, and then we'll come to our panelists for their perspectives. The opposition NDC's claim follows reports of missing excavators seized from some illegal small-scale miners, as revealed by the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabena Frimpong Boatin. Speaking at a news conference in Accra on Thursday, National Communications Officer of the NDC, Sami Jemfi, insisted the missing excavator saga goes to confirm the suspicion that government only wanted to enrich MPP bigwigs through the illegal activity. This Galamsey scandal is a result of a grand scheme set up by President Ekufuadu himself to enrich MPP officials to finance the new patriotic party. This is the reason he populated the inter-ministerial committee against illegal mining and anti-Galamsey committees with top MPP officials such as Ekowa Wisi, Charles Bissu, among others. Sami Jemfi made mention of the Galamse fraud documentary by ace investigative journalist Anas Arimiya Anas, in which a presidential staffer, Charles Bissu, was caught collecting money to facilitate mining. Apart from the Galamse kingpin, Charles Bissu, several actors within the Kufuado government have in one way or the other compromised the fight against Galamse whilst President Okufuado looks on unconcerned. He went ahead to align instances the president failed to act to end the menace, suggesting it was all deliberate in order to get the MPP bigwigs to enrich themselves. It is important that we appreciate and realize that yes, a grave matter has happened. But that grave matter happened because Professor Frimpong Boati himself raised it. It was not as if somebody else raised it for him. So Professor Frimpong Boati's integrity, as far as that difficult office is concerned, to me, is intact. Now, the question is, what do you do once the matter he raised has come up? As we speak, the excavators, or some of the excavators, I can't tell the exact numbers, have been found. And beyond that, people have been arrested. I have seen that tip. I don't think Frimpon Boatin said anything out of the ordinary. The areas where illegal mining was most endemic are areas where we don't doubt the MPP strongholds. Are they not? These are areas where the vote tends to be higher for the NDC, uh, MPP. To the extent that MPP activists are also entitled Eh, to participate in legal mining. Read my lips. They are also entitled to participate in what? Legal community mining. Then there is absolutely nothing wrong with Frimpon Boating facilitating community mining options for those people. And I heard on that tape distinctly from Paul Boatin saying that go and find out from the Ashanti Regional Chairman's concession. Am I correct? The word concession was used. A concession is a legal authority, legal license to access mining lands. And therefore, won't miss concessions are legal. Including John Bordeaux? No, John Bordeaux hasn't done anything. John Bordeaux had a discussion to facilitate access for, and that is where it ended. 
so you had uh, the back and forth there with um, uh, the NDC NPP. We heard from uh, Sami Jemfi, <laughs> who is the communi National Communications Officer of the NDC, and Amano Bubwabing uh, Asamwa, the um, Communications Director mm -hmm. of the NPP and also the MP for Adenton constituency. I will start this conversation uh, from um, Honorable Inusa mm. Fuseni. Yes. Obviously, earlier on, you had to talk about that whole yes. thing. Parliament. But also, looking at this, you are from a former natural and resources minister as well, yes. in, in involved in this as well. What do you <laughs> see to be happening with this whole issue about 500 excavators gone missing? Well, but before that, please touch on there. Well, you see, the effort for Parliament. And I agree with Senator. You know, in our development as a country, the only institution that has suffered the greatest is Parliament. Mm -hmm. Anytime there was a change cool. of government, there was that that was disbanded. So Parliament is not developing. And then when we went into the Fourth Republic, we decided to promulgate a, a stability constitution. <laughs> if you want to call it a political constitution. We had a head of state who was he, he was strong and I mean overbrooding. I mean so huge. So you needed stability. You vested a lot of powers in him, including powers to appoint and disappoint ministers of state. <laughs> okay, in the Lima administration, Lima was not powerful because we had done the strict separation of powers. Mm -hmm. And so when even Lima presented a budget, budget to parliament, it was rejected. It it was rejected. Yeah. But now you can't have it. it can't. Sometimes, and yes, I agree entirely with you. Maybe we need to look at the framework. Sure. Sometimes the president brings or executive brings a motion to parliament or an agreement and he's already assured the other partners that by the end of the month this should be passed mm -hmm. it cannot be yeah but we must pass it you know you understand so and there are minutes there are minutes so, we need uh, to look, we, at, we that. Need to look there, at that yeah but right. generally parliaments act that way you will see what has happened in america okay. and trump hmm. the republicans all would accept one who wanted to <laughs> keep trump you see what happened in britain those who opposed Boris, mm -hmm. Boris Johnson mm -hmm. were sacked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 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 so that's how they are. But generally, for your own integrity, you must be working as a parliament. Right. You know, and so we must look at ways. And I have said the comprehensive amendment that was suggested by the Constitutional Review Committee should be looked at by the, sure. the, the, the president. Right. And I've said it publicly to him. If I meet him personally, I will tell him to <laughs> Mr. Mm -hmm. President, go back and look Let's at Let's look at that. Right. Yes. Sure. Thanks for that. Now, after the Galaxy matter, and the excavators, to be honest with you, on your studio, I told you that they will fail. You recall, I told you they will fail. If all the, the signs of failure were there, even from the one, one, it is an interministerial tax force or committee on illegal small scale mining. I was there before as chairman, but I was minister for lands and natural resources. You form the tax force and you put Professor Frimpong Barton as chairman. Frimpong, Professor Frimpong Barton is not a minister for lands and lands. So he doesn't know the, those who are legal small scale miners and those who are illegal small scale miners. And why do I say that? The first major decision the, the committee took was to ban everybody. That was wrong, totally. It put tremendous pressure on them. Why do we make laws? We make laws to incentivize people. Those who follow the laws must be rewarded. Those who break the laws must be punished. Then you come and you treat those who have obeyed the law, expended their resources, time and energy, the same as those who have breached the law. So what have you done? You've killed it totally. You've killed the incentive for good governance at, at the minerals area. For you do it for more than one year. And you know that those who went for the license had to take money. Where are they going to pay? They will be compelled to go back. They will be compelled. When I said it, they insulted me. Three. Hey, Gary, they, we are all here. My hometown, I can't go and start building a hemp coop on land without first getting title to a land. I'm sure it's everywhere. And you know in law, there's no land in this country that has no owner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at what point did the interministerial committee involve the chiefs? Mm -hmm. Because they give them permission to go. 
Indeed, that, the president did say that um, in July, yes. where he actually put the presidency on the line. I yes. think I have He said that we cannot do this without the, the involvement of so when did they traditional involve the authorities. I'll try to pull that up. Hey. Uh, and I, I always, when I'm on programs like this, I must salute Officer Hine. Have you ever heard that there's a galaxy in Officer? When I was minister and I was addressing the chiefs, they said, oh, it's because the government hasn't paid us our royalties. And so when anybody comes with money and says that, and we don't have royalty, you know, maintaining the story is difficult. Mm -hmm. Then officer, he said, Minu, eh, nana, it is not about royalties. The chiefs don't want to stop it. Mm -hmm. Officer, you think we have no gold? Mm -hmm. But nobody does go and say, officer, because we So we hear, oh, he, now we hear, but you are the. It's what I'm saying. Three. Small scale miners. When I was at the ministry, to fight small scale miners, you need to be in partnership with the legal small scale miners who are form an association. Because when you no more a room, they know who. <laughs> and who's, so you they, you must they must be your ears. Right. If you don't do that, mm. there's no way. Mm. Look, fringe communities. Chichewure, one day mining disaster happened. Chichewure, I went there. The people of Chichewure were not those mining. Mm. The miners are they have their they come with their equipment and their money. And when they finish mining, they leave the pits and spoil the water for the people of Chichewure. So you need people of Chichewure to always inform you that people have come and they are destroyed. Because they destroy their water bodies, they destroy their land. Mm. Five disease. Alima said they were compromised. I said it number one when he formed the committee. Mr. President, can you make the ability of a DCE to stop illegal money in his district a key performance indicator? Because oh, no, they are the highest political authority. Right. Not, so you can see, Gary, the tilt the, the, the signs. signs were there. Yeah. I'm not talking about civil uh, CSOs. Yeah. Because you have got them. Environment. So you are but looking at how the, the framework was put together. Because we need to stop Galapse. Mm. If we don't stop Galapse in this country, we are all at risk. Even sitting in Accra, mm. you fishes cannot even survive in the water. Mm. Mercury, look, let's commission anybody to go and do mm. a study of uh, the children, health, the hospitals, visit the hospitals in Galapse areas. You will see women are bringing forth deformed children. Why? Due to the Mercury. Chemicals. Yes. I mean, uh, I so know. now <laughs> the <laughs> present sets of this committee, uh -huh. you seize excavators because I, after the first phase, I amended the law. You, you could only seize, you couldn't confiscate. So I went and said, look, we must make it punitive enough. So I amended the law and make made a confiscation possible. You have confiscated. So the responsibility. Of taking care of the confiscated equipment, rest with you, the chairman, and the interministerial task force. And we provided guidelines. If you confiscate six months down the line, the equipment must go to state institutions. Not to be bent. Not to be bent. Even we never bent. That's why I always tell you to me. Even when I was father, we never bent equipment. Now, so when you and when you do that, you publish it in the gazette. With the transparency. Now you are sitting there. And even a party vice chairman walks to your office and confronts you on your integrity and Right. Before we go into that, I think, mm. yeah, I mean, you, you, you talk of the telltale signs and all, but you, you would agree, wouldn't you, that indeed, at least from the initial stages, it appeared that they were doing something right. There were some successes to the extent that even the Ghana Ooh. Water, just a minute, the Ghana Water Company, came out to say that, yes, turbidity levels had reduced and that the cost of, um, is it treating water, had gone down because before they were putting I'm in gonna, so much. I'm just saying that gonna, it's agree, not, not a case I'm, that because, it because was... Because we don't have time, we are yes. talking within constraints. Mm -hmm. Abna, everybody knows, okay. if you have ever held a public position and you know that if in this place we are going to use law and order, mm -hmm. if they put a clocking system here and say that, look, if you don't come to work mm -hmm. at this time, your salary will be reduced. I give you the first week, people mm -hmm. will come. Yes, Second right. week, 
third week, it will start winning. If it's not enforced, yeah, yeah. definitely. So, so that's where, yeah, that's, that's where, so, where so, the so it's not were, necessarily it, the case. So it is not sustainable. So you're looking at sustainability. Right, that's fine. Um, Gary, um, okay, <laughs> Poppy, quick question. The president, as I indicated earlier, in July, I mean, when he was talking about all these things and the fact that, yes, he was putting his presidency on the line, you know, made very laudable statements and it was good to our hearing. Given what has happened recently, or looking at what has happened recently, would you say the president's actions or inactions speak to the kind of commitment he made us believe he had back in July 2017? No, I, I would not want to hold brief for the president, but this is a scenario where I would say, with all due respect, the king is naked. The king is naked. The king mm. is naked because mm. those around him that he trusted to do what ought to be done have let him down big time. I have no doubt, and I don't think any president in the history of Ghana would support Galamse. I don't think so. But fortunately, we had a president who, like you said, put his presidency on the line, showed the level of commitment he had to fight this menace. Mm -hmm. But of course, the president could not have been the head of the tax force. He trusted people and gave them all his support. And this even established an office at the presidency to support this. And this showed how committed he was to fight this. I, those around him, those in charge, have let him down big time. So like, if, if they have, what shouldn't he be doing certain things for us to see that oh, indeed he is? For I how be, many days so, now? So I will be surprised if by the end of the month, we don't see any action. But why no. that long? I mean, look at look no, at wait, look wait, at Ebba's look at Ebba's scandal yes, for yes, instance, and how. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, no, no. Let, 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 let me build. Let me build my point. Expeditiously. Let me build my point. Yeah. I I I criticize the president if he he comes out to say, for example, in the Australian visa scandal, without necessarily waiting for whatever public investigation processes to mm -hmm. complete to say the guy is free. In the same way. I would criticize him if he doesn't, because the police are investigating this matter. If he doesn't wait, I would not, I would not play, play hot and cold. That is what I'm saying. I, the police said they have taken statements, they're investigating it, and these are criminal charges that have been made. I saw a letter from Professor Frimpon Boati, I don't know if it is true, well, formally complaining it. to the police to investigate certain monies that have been paid to some people. Right. I would want, I would not push the president to say before these investigations and this or take your action in the same way that would be also interfering because i criticize him when he does the opposite so i would want to wait but it is very obvious that these people that have been taxed with these things have let the president down and if they are allowed to continue to be in office then the whole country should have a second look mm -hmm. because this galamse fight is a huge 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 thing whether politically or apolitically. Mm -hmm. And we should not let it go lying down. I have not heard the former uh, Mr. Charles Bishu ever since the Anas exposure, even though he was publicly cleared or they said they would not investigate, there is but, nothing in yeah. it. I don't... But the not, Office of the Special, Special Prosecutor still has that... I have not seen we him getting involved though. in any way with this Galamse issue or anything. And... I would be surprised if those that have been met, like Professor Frimpon Boateng, they, they still remain at post after everything goes down. I think that they have let the president down. They have let the people of Ghana down, and they should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, if you're making this statement now, yes. even before the investigations, then... No, no, we because, see because some, we I mean, saw the signs on the wall. Exactly. Listen, and may, may the soul of Major Mahama rest in peace. For me, when, I, when these things came out, like, this young man has virtually died it. for nothing. Yeah. And there's no amount of money that is given to his children or his family that will compensate for why his blood was shed. Right. And we have a huge runabout or something dedicated to his memory, and we are still going about doing or... Conf what, what is it? Allowing the things that he died for to happen. Right. And now, I mean, I mean people are clearly saying that Galamse is thriving. It's not only... It hasn't only returned, but it is thriving. The price of illegal gold, let me put it that way. You know, shut up, because the demand 
was higher than their supply. It meant that those who were controlling that business at that time made a lot of money. Sure. So let's cut off the huge masses from having access to it. Let the few people would have it. And that was the tip. If it is ends up to be true, says that let this be a means of making money for the party. I do not think that was the intention of the president. Mm. I do not think so. Yeah. And so this is something that the MPP should put their feet on. And they should not be defending it at all. At all. Mm. At all. It's a shame to Ghana. It's, it's, we are dying. Mm. Gradually. Like mm. Honorable said, fishes do not survive. Mm. Water will not survive. At the end of the day, it doesn't affect those in the places where the mines, the illegal mining goes on. It mm. affects all of us mm. right. as a country. It definitely and we does. should not let this slide at all, at all. I'll be going to Mr. Sinan quickly, but before that, um, Honorable, yes. the minority is calling for um, 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 Professor Fempon Boating to is that okay, re re resign. Yes. Fraudulent breach yes. of trust. Mm. <laughs> Fraudulent breach. You see, you have seized equipment. The equipment, after six, uh, six months, becomes government property. You are to distribute the pro uh, equipment by a certain order. There's a procedure. Then you convert the equipment. That's a fraudulent. You see, that office is an office of trust. Mm. And so when you fraudulently breach the trust, you no longer, you not only commit an offense, you disappoint you the people point, of this country. And then these actions are part of the problems that Ghana has, that people who are put in public offices are not trusted. Right. Very well. Very well. By now you have sacked. <laughs> <laughs> I would yes, yes. like to take advantage of this, uh, Abna, to talk about some reflection I've been having. Mm -hmm. And in that reflection, I've been comparing Ghana with Kenya, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we lack the governance architecture mm -hmm. to keep our ministers on track. Mm -hmm. And by saying that, I, I would like to look at what are the key performance indicators and who is measuring them. In Kenya, they currently have a system where there is a dashboard, an electronic dashboard. Every minister, the performance indicators, publicly available to media and citizens, so that month by month, quarter by quarter, we can see, has the minister delivered on the mandate? To the extent that you cannot run away from it, because every quarter, they will have a presidential roundtable, ministers are going to be asked, and the public is aware. Let's not make it that easy for our ministers not to perform. And then we say the president has been, you know, know it, it really doesn't happened. make sense. Yeah. So I am saying that there are other jurisdictions in Africa where they are doing a lot of things that are very progressive. Ghana must urgently learn from those jurisdictions. Let's have electronic platforms where the key performance indicators for our ministers are there. Public officials, not even ministers. Oh, yes, at all levels. Said that we can engage them and say, Mr. Minister, at the beginning of taking office, these were the 20 things we expected you to perform yeah. on. These are the actions you've taken. As far as we can see, you've not delivered on 12 out of the 20, and even on the 8, so and so and so. Then we can get the results we deserve as citizens. We do have a, a, a ministry for monitoring and evaluation. It so is what, not what performing. Sure. And I think they should scrap it. Mm. Let's have the architecture that delivers on the promise that citizens expect. Mm. And, and let's not just keep trifling around these issues. So if our president is serious, we need to see a turnaround. Let's have the indicators that his ministers are supposed to work to mm. and be able to measure that they're delivering so that we don't end up, at the end of the day, a long book, a green book, or a blue book, and we are trying to say we've achieved 200 things. That is not going to help us. So, so we, should, Kenya, let's we should be doing In Kenya, that. He says that you can't run away. You actually can't run away when you resign. Even though that you can't be the key performance yes. indicators, you, you raise your hand. Right? Really I resign. Go. I mean, uh, well, we, 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 we definitely need to be looking at things differently. We can't continue this way. But let me quickly introduce um, a, a, another panelist who's joining us now in the person of Mr. Edward Akwoko. He is the Director of Policy and Research of uh, the Artisanal and Small Field Mining Africa Network, is that it? For Asman. short, it's Asman. Sure. Good to have you here. We're grateful. Thank you. For good morning to all of you. Good morning. Great. Good to see Honorable here today. I've good engaged good. him several times. Yeah. See, I'm happy he's singing the song we have been singing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he didn't used to sing that song, right? No. Okay. No. So you see. He's singing that song. And we I'm thank God. <laughs> we thank God. Right. Now, Gary. Uh, well, I'm not. Where are <clears> the 500 excavators? I mean, this is clearly a, a, a big deal. We can't, you know, just 
let this go. <clears throat> Well, I know no. it's it's mm. the, the police has made some arrests and all, but question is, um, how should we deal with the persons who were put in charge of this very very important task? Well, Abner, this was a matter that when it broke it, I have been very silent. I have not commented on it, and I said that uh, until I received a full briefing and uh, read some documentation on it. I won't comment on it. Um, I think Thursday, Friday, I have some documents to read. And in view of that, I'll make a small comment on it because of its revealing the contents and it's a... Uh, so you need more information to be no, able to I have, comment? I have, read, I have read the documentation. I know times where you have very little read, information, but you read, do speak. So that's please, what I'm saying. go I've ahead. Read the, <laughs> I've read the documentation, uh -huh. few of them. Sure. And I'll just make limited statements uh, on the matter. Now, I have my doubts if indeed the so-called excavators which are missing are 500. I have my doubts. And I say so because from the information that I have, um, there were no reconciliation done as of September of 2019. Now, if there was a reconciliation at that time, at the time when they were transitioning, but is anyone disputing this figure, like publicly, since this news broke? Is anyone disputing this figure? That is what I'm saying. Let me, let me, let me, if you let me land, you will mm. get where I'm coming from. You see, I heard the minister made that statement, that 500. Mm. 500. And I said, I have my doubts. My doubts is stemming from this point, that from the, the documentation that I have read. See, without documentation, Abna, you can't be just be talking. Well, we are lawyers, I get it, know? but this is also coming now, from a minister who that, is responsible is or who I'm was responsible that for the this. The minister who made that statement, I'm questioning, mm. I'm questioning the basis of that statement. Okay. The reasoning is that, as at the time they were transitioning, that is his new task force, which have the old one that was, that was there, there was no reconciliation that was done mm. to ascertain the number of excavators that were, that were seized, those that were brought to Accra or other places, those that were at the DCs places, those at the various regions. There was no reconciliation. So the question I ask myself, that how did he come by the figure 500? Because you ought to have done a reconciliation to know that, well, these excavators were seized from these and these sites, okay? These ones were moved from this site to Accra, to Abelempe, to Tema, to whatever, to various DC places. Mm -hmm. These ones maybe have been released. These ones are now the final figure which we have. Then after that, you now what? Bring your new task force to take over. So you can now say, okay, having the, all these ones seized, where are these ones? Then you cannot say this figure is unaccountable for. But as I'm telling you, then from the information that I received and from the, 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 the documents I read, that I have read, I have my doubts. So how many are there from what you so have? So that is why the police are, is now investigating the matter. No, but you say you have, your, you have doubts because, about because, it. So because there's no reconciliation. There's no reconciliation. You see, if there's no reconciliation, how do we determine, and I'm telling this on authority, because without a reconciliation, I have my, why, how did the minister come to say that it is 500, or even 100, or even 1,000? That's my question I have to, I'm, I'm posing to the minister. You see, I thought, or I'm thinking, that the process that was used, in my view, was wrong. Because if you have a new task force to take over from an old task force, the first thing you must do is that let's reconcile the figures. Okay, that's fine. So uh, the, the, the numbers really and truly, and I'm saying this advisedly, shouldn't matter. The point is, even if it's one even if that it, went even missing, if, even if it's it still if, I mean, uh, even bad. If, even if it's 0. 0.5, yes. it ought not to happen. Yes. You read the ties. Even, even if it's tied, ties, exactly. it ought not to happen. <laughs> because, you see, the reasoning is that guy, the, guy, the president, the guy to go. you see, mm -hmm. the, president, the president is committed 
and he put his presidency on the line mm -hmm. to fight that. But so far, I mean, people are, are, are saying, yeah, well, yeah, we haven't that. seen that necessarily man being made manifest. Oh, I, mean, I, if thought, I, thought, your... I thought you yourself, you, you, you gave a clear indication that even Ghana Water came and said no, that. No, but that was the initial stage. We are talking about events that have happened subsequently and where we are at currently. This is definitely not good. I think that there has to be an audit into the work of the task force. Currently, there should be an audit for us to find out so far where are we? So far, when you came and did the work, what have you done? Have you, is the situation improved or are we degenerating? If it is so, you come and tell Ghana yes, because see, this Galamse issues or this menace is a matter that we cannot condone. Yeah. And I, I agree, I agree in total with the Honorable Minister on this matter. Mm -hmm. We cannot, because you see, if we allow this to fester, we are going to have a major difficulty on our hands. Yeah. Okay. It should be a national, a, nation, a national disaster. Right. You know, so I will not sit here and condone any act of anybody. Mm. You see, because at the end of the day, we must take steps to sanitize our environment. Mm. We ought to do that. So if somebody has been taxed to do this job and the person has failed, the president is the appointing authority. Mm -hmm. He is appointing authority. He has, he has the power to appoint right. or to, now, or to, the, or to disappoint. So, <laughs> for me, the police issued a statement. To appoint anybody. The police issued a statement on the fourth of February, twenty twenty, and indicated that six persons had been arrested over the missing excavators and other equipment seized by operators of Operation Vanguard. And uh, paragraph two says, suspect Echo Wusi, who was contracted to take custody of the seized equipment was arrested on Monday, February 3rd at Abilinke, and it goes on and on and on and on. I think what has become uh, of major interest is how, you know, this person, uh, the suspect, Eko Usi, was brought into the whole framework. His responsibility to cart the seized excavators and the who's watch, what was the arrangement, all of that obviously is in focus now. Yes. And we need to you yes. know, look at that, yes. even pending the investigations and all. I mean, these are yes. questions that are agitating the minds yes. of Ghanaians. Under what yes. circumstances was he contracted? Exactly. What were the arrangements and all of that? I, I agree with you. The engagement, engagement contract that they had mm -hmm. with him and his company as to the terms, what was he supposed to do? If 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 they arrest these uh, machines on site, yeah, and they go and carry them, yeah. what were the instructions that mm -hmm. were given to him? Mm -hmm. Has he validated the instructions? Yeah. If yes, you know, we, we, he might he might he might be sanctioned for that. Right. I, you see, normally I am a bit hesitant to conclude on matters even before the investigative authorities come with their findings. <laughs> you see, so now that the police is investigating, I will just wait. They should investigate. You should come and tell Ghanaians whether or not indeed excavators have been missing. Mm. If it is so, how many excavators are missing? If it is so, where are those excavators? Are they back on site? Have they been handed to, to people who they shouldn't hand over, over to them? Where are they? Or maybe for all you know, it's a ruse. No excavator is even missing at all. Well, they have found oh. that <laughs> you see? And, and why see? would the minister come out and make that, that is a statement? Why, that is why I indicated that. That statement that he made. No, but that one, you're questioning the number. But um, for him to have come out to mm -hmm. make a statement, clearly then it means some quantity of excavators. Yeah, but I'm not, my difficulty with that, that statement, and I, mm. I, and I stand by what I have read, mm. my difficulty with that, not to defend anybody. You see, for me to say that, X number of excavators are missing or they've been stolen. It's been premised on certain facts available to me. That's what I'm saying. If I tax you to do a job for me, all right, I am the, you know, the minister. You are just the, you know, the, the body doing the work. Mm -hmm. Before I make any statement, I have to now order for reconciliation. And the reconciliation is born out of certain things. One, oh. from the task force, what they see is, they, they, have, they, they must have, sure. give me documentation. How many do, uh, 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 machines did you hand over to the... I think you made the, that point. Yeah. You understand? Now, the person who already came for, for money for doing the work for you, how many invoices have we submitted to my office to be paid? You see, Gary, okay. I asked you a question earlier. I yes. mean, I appreciate the fact that you say you have certain documents that, you know, upon which you are making these statements. Yes. But are you able to tell us exactly what figure you have from that record? Otherwise, no, then unless, you still haven't substantiated no, 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 your... No, no, you see, because if I do so, 
are we preempting what the police is doing? And that is not right. But you're still, I mean, the police is investigating you're still the matter. Put it in doubt. The police investigate the These documents, these documents which was brought to my attention, mm -hmm. I'm told, has been handed over to the CID. Mm. So let us wait. Let them reconcile their figures. All right? Let them reconcile what the ministry has, what has been given to them. They, I think they should even be, a, be an so auditor. So you think it should be more or less from your documents? Do you think it's more or less? Or do you, have you made that assessment? Is it more or um, less? Uh, maybe more maybe, maybe you'd be surprised that even at the end of the day, there, there's none. <laughs> it's even missing. I'm surprised. Well, I doubt. I doubt. So, that. so, so, or that's what I'm saying. Let us wait. Let the police reconcile the figures between what has been, has been given to them, what the ministry will give them, what the task force actually sees on the ground, what was given to the the, the, the so-called uh, the contractor to do, yeah. Yeah. and then come out with a figure and tell us what has transpired. Mm. That, that is that is the view I've taken. Mm. Mm. Very well. I mean, ongoing. We we are, we do hear that some are being retrieved excavators are being retrieved so indeed as to you saying that it may very well be that none is missing that it may very well is not because true. excavators, excavators they, can, they, they can, like you rightly said they, they cannot fly of course they cannot fly. you have much food so on they, the low bed to move so it they, they've been moved or wherever they've been taking so if they have been moved if they've been moved Mr. they Papa. ought to be returned yes I'll so come that, to that you. Wait. <laughs> but honorable will be leaving us yes. soon so i just want you to make your you know concluding remarks on this particularly looking at <clears throat> I think we've talked about the issue about law enforcement. In, yes. in every difficulty we find ourselves, you it's go down, exactly. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the, 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 the amended act stipulated or mandated that the seized excavators should be kept at a certain location. From the discourse so far, it's clear that that didn't happen. And we find ourselves in this situation. So clearly, the consequences of non-compliance is... Is what we're paying for. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and I have, oh, I have, first of all, let me make a, a categorical, make a categorical clear that Professor, Professor Barton needn't have involved himself to that level where even members of the interministerial tax force or person who had been co-opted can get into his office and speak to him the way mm. he was spoken to. That is my difficulty. You see? Uh, and I'm happy that uh, Assam is here. Yeah. The, when we were doing it, we designated appropriate district assemblies as holding centers. And then we, every week, the, uh, the interministerial task force chairman, that is, at that time it was one general monsieur, he would give me a CTREP, a situation report. So I knew exactly how many had been uh, uh, taken, how many had been paid for, because at that time there was no confiscation. So you have to pay for and take your excavator away and all those things. But to constitute somebody into a conveyor belt, mm -hmm. that is where the problem is. And that conveyor belt is not clean. Right. And the MPP knows that he's not, he was not clean. At the time they were constituting you into a conveyor belt. It's not a clean man. This man had come from London. And we know his past history. And then you come, and then, so that's why the excavators end, ended in Africa. Mm -hmm. So, in Ivory Coast, I don't think they're, <laughs> they're not. Oh, can I see me? Can I see me? Well, it's yet, it yet to be. It's yet to be. Can I see me? I said that. It's yet to be established. It's yet to be established. But I think we do have some time before we take the break. So let me let me bring in Mr. Akwaku coming from the Artisanal and Small Scale Mining Africa Network, and you are at the heart of this whole discussion. So it's good to have you here. Thank you. How, I mean, if you could. Let us understand the work of obviously you don't represent the operation Vanguard or whatever, no, but no. definitely you knew their activities, uh, you, you, you knew about it, how they were working. Yeah. There was Galam Stop, then there was what Operation Vanguard, and all stemming from the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. Mm. How did that work? How did you see those activities play out? All right, thank you very much, and uh, I'm most grateful to be part of the show. Sure. Uh, I am sure that your listeners and viewers who have followed uh, the various media general stations have observed that for the past three, four days, I've been mm -hmm. you know, making a lot of submissions. And today, I'm happy once again to say that what we from civil society who work on these artisanal and small scale mining people have been saying, which both governments, MPP and NAC, hitherto have not listened today. Gradually, the chicken is coming home to roost. They are beginning to listen. And that's why I mentioned Honorable. I mean, Honorable remembers very well. 
we have said from time and again that using a national solution to fight a local problem wasn't going to work. Yeah. Mm. And we have been consistent. Yeah. There is no way you will form a tax force sit in Accra or, for example, Operation Vanguard, which has only two head offices in Oboasi and Takwa, to fight a local problem in over 30 districts. It will work. We have maintained that, look, give the burden of responsibility to the DCE. Let the DCE, together with the mining committees, which are local, they should co-opt all other major stakeholders, the chiefs, I mean, uh, the you know, faith-based organizations. Let's have the reverend ministers or pastors, the imams, part of the committee. Let's have, uh, you know, the, uh, um, I mean, the EPA, who, anybody that matters at the local level. Because they are on the grounds and they know where these things are going on. Mm. Our proposition has been a three-legged approach. And I'll explain to you. The first one is this local committee we are talking about. Once the president gives the burden of responsibility to the D.C., and you tell the D.C., look, if there's the slightest iota of Galamse in your district, I'll fire you. Do you think the D.C.s are not so proud and happy to be in that Nizam Patrol 2019 they are riding? <laughs> they, they really love to be there. And they will not allow themselves to be fired because of Galamse. Even this rumor and allegation that some of them are neck deep mm -hmm. in the whole process will be gone because he knows very well that once he's accused of being a part of it, he's lost his job. You understand? So our point has been this. Once you have this committee there, what else is needed is the resources. All these massive resources that we pile at the national headquarters. Look at the amount of investment made in Operation Vanguard. Drones, $3 million, you know, pickups, and on. We say give But those drones were to be sent to the various areas, but right? are they there? Fine. Have, are they, they, have there? they also gone missing? No, they are not missing. Mm. But you normally see them, you know, in a convoy, 10, 15, from one point to the site. Now, we are saying that, look, if, let's say, you give a pickup or two to every district where it's headed by DC, they have that resource to attack the problem head on. We are saying that, look, it's good to have these drone, you know, and the drone pilots. Post the drone pilots to the districts. They have their local office there. Let the drone pilot be there. Let him have a drone. He should use it to support the local tax force there. Now, when you have these things, give them the necessary resources. And I'm telling you, there's no better person who can report on the state of Galamsey than the DCE. And let, because it's a special situation, let the president tell every DCE, give me monthly reports through the interministerial to my office. And let's see if within a matter of three months, Galamsey will not be gone. Because the DC is in a better position to record the, how many excavators were seized in its district before it's even transported to a central yeah. location. Mm. Yeah. And you can easily reconcile the report of the DC with the national report yeah. that will be given to you. You understand? The DC is in a better position to nip corruption because the diversity of this committee I'm talking about will even be enough antidote to corruption. Right. You have the Reverend Minister, the Imam there. Do you think they will allow themselves to be corrupted? If even the DC alone takes money, I'm telling you, the Reverend Minister will come out and talk. The Imam will talk. The civil society groups, and we are even saying, even make the media, the local media houses, make them a part of these committees. They're all part of civil society. Yeah. Exactly. Do you think if we had these situations, we would have been battling today with this issue of alleged loss of gold and need, the rest? We need to take a break, but you talked about the three-pronged approach. Right. You talk, no, you, the second you, one was is third. That, you talked about the second one, right. which is the resource. What's the third? No, no, no. The second one is actually the community mining, because once you take the people out of this, so we are saying that, look, one of the immediate solutions is the community mining concept. Look for an ideal place. Let's have the experts guide them to work mm. so that they can at least have some, because it's a matter of livelihood. People need to survive. So once you have a good place that you think can be mined, guided by the right people that they have been trained at, uh, you know, UMAT and the rest, you have geologists, you have mine engineers, helping them to work mm -hmm. under supervision, right. then we can actually have, and then the third prong will be the prosecution leg. Mm -hmm. You may still have recalcitrant ones who may not want to take advantage of the, uh, you know, alternative. I mean, even there's another leg where some people are even supposed to go into palm fruits, others are going into agriculture. They can go. Right. But those who will say that, look, irrespective of all these arrangements, we will still go into the water and mine. Then you put them before court. But then in the court, the major challenge has been that, despite even the setting up of the special galaxy course, people, they are still complaining that the process is slow. So I want the president, like President Kufo did during the, uh, his era, 
concerning businesses. When the business committee started complaining that, look, you come to Ghana, you have an issue with land, and it takes 10, 20 years. It's a demotivation. Then he said he set up the special commercial courts. And these courts were dealing expeditiously with land issues. It brought some confidence to the business existing. We are saying that let's have same for the Galaxy Court. If it's within the law, if it's permissible, I'm not a lawyer. Sure. So if it's permissible, let the president give them timelines. Let's say deal with Galamsey matters in a matter of a month or two. That's fine. But you see, honorable. I'm talking about the court. Just a minute. That's why I said if it's permissible. We need to take a break. But we need to take a break. But before that, that's why I use the word if it's permissible. This perception about how slow things run in court, I think we need to, there's, there's a point where we need to correct something, which is the courts are there to work. But this requires work by prosecutors. If the prosecutors are not being able or quick enough to bring the cases to court or to bring documents that are required for the court to proceed, what is the judge to do? Well, you see, it's a whole government. The prosecutors are part of the executive. Yes. They are part of the police. They are part of the attorney general's department. So if they do their work well, if they um, bring facts of the case, they are willing and able and always present in court, what will present, prevent the judge from working? Exactly. Okay, so we say Gamo. Yeah. And if you find a judge who is not regular, you report that to the chief justice there. and he's taken off. Yeah. So we need to do comprehensively. I think this talking is good. Sure. It would, it would Ghana, Ghana must move forward. Definitely. Definitely. We need yeah. to take a break. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will take a look at other aspects of this as well. My guests in the studio have been uh, or are um, Honorable Fuseni, who has taken leave of us soon, but the other three will be here. Gary Nimakun, also. Um, um, Adam Senanu and um, Edward Akwoko. We'll see you shortly after this break. Welcome back. You're still watching and listening to The Key Points live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online at 3news.com, also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So we're still looking at the missing excavators issue and um, my panelists are still here, but I'll be taking some messages that have come through so far and then we return to the panel. Um, this one is coming in from David in Sandema. He says, good morning, Abna. The swiftness with which the president has referred the Airbus saga to the special prosecutor for investigation, uh, same should be done to his appointees who have engaged in, in the alleged corruption. Failure to do that will mean that the special prosecutor is a tool to harass and intimidate his political opponents. Uh, good morning, Abna. It appears our media, too, are not helping in the corruption fight. Majority uh, uh, get animated during the Airbus scandal against NDC Barada trying to support the president's corrupt officials, Galamse, is more serious than Airbus. That's Kweku in La Paz. Simon in Larbik in Tepa says, good morning to you and your guest. Uh, you're doing well. The president puts his presidency on the line in the fight against Galamse. The only way we, he can prove to the world and Ghanaians is to allow the law to severely deal with those individuals he entrusted uh, to see to Galamse. Uh, that way he would be doing a lot of good himself and the alleged corrupt manners of uh, Galamse. The issue of Galamse fight was a calculated attempt by fraudulent state officials to enrich their pockets and finance party activities through seizures of gold, allocation of concessions to party apparatchiks and selling of confiscated mining equipment. And that's the fact which is manifesting now. My, head, my heart bleeds for my beloved Ghana. That's Munaf Wakilu. Um, Alex in Cape Coast says, please ask the gentleman on your, okay, on your immediate left, <laughs> from which direction is he defending the missing excavators? I believe that is to you, Gary. Uh, the minister who seized and counted the machine says 500, and you are saying he is not right when you, at the backbencher, is not on the playing field. The guys swerved the minister in the deals, and he saw that he was too um, old to tackle, so if it will... Enter the goal, then it must be a corner kick. Okay, that's your analogy. Uh, this one says, I totally disagree with Mr. Nimako because even if just two excavators have disappeared or flown into Burkina Faso or wherever, should that uh, be accepted in the fight against Galamse? Zeta in Accra says, The way Mr. Gary is going on the missing excavators issues tells me the government will manipulate the figures and they will come out to say no excavator is missing <laughs> or the former government team did not hand over any excavator. And therefore, that is what confuses the minister or confuse the minister to give the wrong number. Hmm. Um, AM in Russia says, oh no, Russia, sorry, from Amasaman says, Abna, good morning. Mr. Nemako should be mindful of what he's saying because Ghanaians are not stupid. For him to claim the police is investigating the matter, why they need to raise the so-called document he had seen. 
I'm so disappointed in this government that I had, tr I had trusted to do the best, that I had trusted it to do the best for Mother Ghana by clearing people, um, says I'm caught in, a, no, people who are caught in engaging in corruption. Um, let's take this one from Silas. He says, good morning to you, Abner, and to your guests. Please, is Gary saying he did not see a single figure on the documents he read in relation to the excavators? Uh, and I think you should begin asking of the gold that were also seized. It was not only excavators that were seized. Quite a lot of messages coming in, but we need to uh, put the brakes on there and return to our panelists. Gary, I mean, I mean I think you, 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 I think you are on, on the board. Yes, yes. The viewers uh, yes, and listeners are asking. Yes, yes. Because don't seem to with, yeah. The viewers, the viewers who are also watching us, they should also understand that when we sit here and we talk, <coughs> we don't talk in vacuum. We talk based on information you have received, <coughs> documents you have read, and mm -hmm. of course we are lawyers. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, if for some reason <coughs> you come and sit here and jump into conclusion that X, Y, Z has happened, when the matter is an investigation, you are already prejudging the matter. No, I, get, I get that bit about not to prejudice yes. things, but this is the, a statement made by no mean person but the minister himself. And so if you have any contrary information, then it should be, you know, you, let us have the figure, for instance, <laughs> not just to say you think, otherwise it's a bit, you know, unsubstantiated. But let me I'm go right. to Mr. <laughs> Mr. Edobson. Right. Gary, I'll, I'll right. come back to you. That was just in rea reaction <laughs> to what the, um, the text messages or the what mes messages that came in said. But yeah, Mrs. Yeah, Inouye. yeah. I, I think that I, I go along with you because once the <laughs> minister had spoken, mm -hmm. um, this is not one of those cases where it happened overnight. Mm -hmm. He probably took the time to understand what had gone on. Because as a minister, you know the gravity mm -hmm. of the implications of what had, had transpired. Yep. And so we would like to take him on his word that he says that this number of mm -hmm. equipment appeared to have disappeared, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et Let me say that what strikes me the most is this is the sector on which our president said he will hang his presidency. Mm. Let's not forget that. Mm. This is the sector on which our president says his presidency hangs. What are the actions he's taking? And so, if you are swift enough to refer one case mm. to the OSP, what's happening here? Is it not being investigated? Please. It's being investigated. If the president says that this is what my presidency hangs on, we'd like to hear the president say something about this. It doesn't mean that he will get into the facts or the processes, but he needs to express his anger at it so that we are aligned with him, so that we all appreciate that the presidency and the government themselves are unhappy about what has transpired. Let's not treat these things as if it's business as usual. So, I like to hear from the president on this. Mm. That yes, he's equally as disappointed as many of us are. That giving his statement that the, his presidency will hang on this. Right. He is that angry about what has transpired. And he should be given ultimatums. Whoever is investigating, it's good to know that the police say, we've picked up six people. Mm. But give them a timeline. Give them a timeline. And let's begin to see some results. It's as if everything in this country related to corruption, we are laid back and so and so forth. How do you expect that the, the citizen will have confidence in what we are doing? Many people are saying that, oh, nothing is going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. It will just be like any of those, Mabi and Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, all those cases. Hmm? When we had the vigilante thing, uh, what is it called? The, what is that area? Uh, the, the recent one where the soldiers and whatnot. not. Is that the West? West. Everybody is complaining that we haven't seen any action. So please, let's get to be a lot more serious about these things. We expect to hear from the president on this. Mm. Yes, police are acting, but that's at, at a low level. If his presidency hangs on this, let's get some feedback. Mm. Right, let's get some feedback. Uh, your words, um, Mr. Edemson. And in fact, the president says, I'm putting him, it will be a betrayal of the trust imposed on me if I fail to end this. And by this, he was referring to uh, Galamse. Um, Mr. Kwaku, 
Yeah, <laughs> is, why the smile let, on your let face? Me, let me just say yeah, that. I'm just, I'm just uh, uh, surprised. What that means, uh, Mr. Sanonu wants a president to be the investigator in this matter. Oh, not the investigator. No, 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 no. And now you say that this no, is, no, the, the police no, investigating no. is a low level. He, he puts his statement no, in a context. No, okay. No. The, the no, there's a context. He's the context. Context. The context. The police investigating a low level. I don't understand. Please. That's fine. Who should investigate the matter in this case? He's saying that for the president to have put his presidency on the line in respect of this, he holds that dear to him. And so given what has transpired recently and the fact that or it appears that the persons he had you know given entrusted. entrusted the job to clearly as has been said around this table has disappointed him we should see him upset by that and for that matter take a certain line of action essentially i think that's what uh mr senenu and many Ghanaians are saying obviously but the police must investigate oh, the definitely matter. definitely and the police but is investigating he would the rather see the, the 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 number one man on the land make a statement to that. i think that's lines. what he's saying um <laughs> mr Kwaku, yeah, wait, me, wait wait me, wait wait for it that, yeah. um i think that this is not a time to feel very easy at all if i were to be the president of this country mm -hmm. i know and i know the president would be very worried at this point in time. But I believe that at appropriate time, I believe, you know, he will act. But personally, as somebody who comes from a mining area, I hear from Obuase, where I have seen lots of these galamsi and all that. I think that it's a very worrying phenomenon because I consider it to be a national security issue now. And we must all be worried, irrespective of one's political lineage. Because it's not just about the alleged missing excavators, pickups, gold, whatever. But then I see worsening turbidity levels of water. In fact, yes, yesterday I heard the GWC in Obuasi, where I come from, you know, also making the same, you know, concerns that the people of Dabuasi were also making. So uh, <coughs> on that issue, yeah, it would strike you then as bizarre that, in view of all these indicators, of course. To, to, to know that you're doing well or not well, there are certain indicators. Obviously, the turbidity level of the water is one. And Ghana Water Company Limited is obviously the institution you can go to for that. Plus, the fact that we deployed drones, how many of them? 200 or so, mm. to all these sites to do the monitoring and everything. And against the backdrop of all that, we were told that we are making a headway in the fight against uh, against Galamsey. Obviously, that does not reflect what we are seeing. Yeah, exactly. So, so it raises questions about the kind of feedback or the reporting that we're getting from the field. Exactly. So what it also means is that there was a lack of an effective monitoring and evaluation mechanism. Because if you have such you know a, a system in place, at least there should have been a minimum of quarterly a monitoring evaluation report sent to the president and these monitoring evaluation reports must be scientifically you know verified it must be verifiable it must not be somebody just standing somewhere and making you know sweeping statements it must be backed with empirical evidence for example you know i mean you have maybe the ghana uh, the uh, what the water research institute doing scientific reports on the state of the water and presenting the reports this could be some of the benchmarks but let me just say that you see it's not just about the turbidity levels now we have you know large tracts of forests you so allegedly also being destroyed and all that but i think in the wake of all this what is even most serious is the alleged seizure and messing of guns in this whole matter mm. For me, that is troubling. The guns have also gone missing. Well, I had one of the concerns, a concerned small scale miners association this morning, alleging that some of their members had guns, you know, at their sites. And some of these foreigners also had guns. And indeed, yes, I have on few occasions seen on television, you know, where these tax force have displayed guns and said, you're China for no mkute kute too. And in fact, sometimes the military have even had cause to use excessive force to arrest them because they said the people were armed. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it means that, but the point is that, where is that audit report and where are these guns? So I think all those issues should be matters of investigation as, uh, you know, the lawyers and uh, the ministers also discuss. I mean, we should look at all these things. And finally, because if these guns get into the wrong hands, mm -hmm. I can assure you yes, we are in trouble. Totally. We are not safe as a country. Yes, definitely. But, I mean, apart from all these, we are also of the view that those calling for the total dissolution of the interministerial tax force, we disagree. We think that the tax force 
has made some effort, but then okay. they, we need to redesign their focus. Because like we are saying, the fighting at the community level should be left you to the You don't think DC that it should, be, it should be dissolved? No, they rather be their role should be re you know, redesigned. And what they should do now is to look at the policy issues surrounding the whole concept. For example, there's a livelihood bit which is supposed to be, you know, palm, you know, fruit plantation and all that. They should look at that. They should concentrate on the regulations, you know, the regulatory framework for these things. They should look at the community mining, you know. So they should look at this because these ones have national, you know, scope. Uh, scope. So they should focus on that and leave the detail fighting to the communities to do that. Very well. Um, Gary, we will we'll look at the issue as to whether or not to dissolve the um, interministerial committee. But before that, let's look at prosecutions, for instance. I mean, for these 500 <laughs> excavators you still, to have been you still, seized... You still keep saying Because 500. that's what the minister has put out. I don't have anything coming contrary so from some other place. So maybe you say alleged, which is, alleged. The, the alleged. minister... Well, the 500 missing... Did he allege? He said they have... Did they, they they, he said they have gone missing. But he, of course, it's a, subject of, okay. it's a subject of investigation. investigation. So they, they are missing... Whether or not the six persons arrested are behind it, that one is yet to be determined. So those persons are suspects, but mm. nothing conclusively said in respect of their, you know, <coughs> and, anyway. and, and, and actions in respect of that. But question is, for these excavators to have been seized, it implies that the persons who were operating them were engaged in illegal mining. That's is that correct? correct? That's, correct. That's correct. So question then is, what happened to those entities that, or from whom these things were seized, are they being prosecuted? That is, that is a reasonable expectation. But are yeah. they, apart from it being reasonable, is that a fact? Are they being prosecuted? No, they ought to be in court, obviously. They ought to be in court. They ought well, to be, but they are to they? Be, Do you know? As, as, as a fact, yes. that they are being prosecuted? Yes. Well, I don't work at the ministry, so I wouldn't be able to know to tell. And I mean, obviously, I'm not a lawyer for any of those people who have been, who have been you know, accused of... Right, doing but in a, your documentation, when you were looking through the these documentation, documents, you didn't come the, across the, the anything. The documentation relates to excavators, excavators that were seized. Yeah. But the excavators that were seized are linked seized. to the entities who were operating... No, but uh, I mean, uh, it is, it, the question is far-fetched. Documents relating to excavators that were seized cannot have a bearing on court prosecutions. Clearly. Yeah. The court prosecutions will relate to you know, people who have been... You know, arrested, mm -hmm. their dockets have been built, prosecutors have put the case before, before the court, whether the district court, the circuit court, or whatever, or the high mm -hmm. court, in the various districts or whatever. That they, I mean, that one, that information, you cannot trace it from the, these documents. So, it's not so we don't know for a fact I whether these. I don't know for a fact. Okay. And I'm going to be honest with the audience. I don't know for but a fact. But we should know, don't you think so? I think we should I, be I able think, to know. I think Ghanaians ought to know yeah. whether those machines that were seized from these persons. Whether the persons have been put before court or not, for engaging if in they put court before court, all right, what is the outcome of the cases? Exactly, it's important that Ghanaians ought to mm -hmm. know. They should be, they should be aware. Mm -hmm. But you cannot trace those information from documents which we are, we are rather assessing as a, which, where, where, this this machine. Where was this seized from? Which district? Which community? It, it's not, but it's it not wouldn't possible. be far fetched that a report that covers. <laughs> Um, excavators that were seized from report. illegal miners or doc they are documents. whatever it is. It's not a report. documents would have that. I mean, it wouldn't be it's far not, It's not a, it's, but it's we, not a report. Yes. They are documents. So just, sure. They are documents detailing transactions. That's fine. We do, so we don't know as of yet whether these persons from whom these excavators I, were. I, I, I will not be in a position to tell right. as whether the persons from whom the machines were seized sure. currently are before Being court. Prosecuted. But reasonably, you should expect mm -hmm. that exactly. once That's you are engaged in illegal mining and you have been caught, you should be put before court, you should be charged, sure. and then they be prosecuted. That, that is the position of the law. Uh, Mr. Kwaku, coming from us, is it Asman? Do you know of any such any prosecutions um, going on? Have you heard? Well, we are aware prosecutions are ongoing, but I think the major concern has been the speed mm -hmm. you know, with which the trials are going on. And mm -hmm. that has been a, a major concern. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm saying that maybe. Uh, at some point also, the judicial service also need to be engaged for them to also appreciate and acknowledge the fact that we need some swiftness. Because I remember hearing uh, one of the PRP persons of the Ghana Armed Forces who are part of the team, you know, saying that their major issue now is that once they arrest the most of the foreigners, the law allows them to be granted bail, of course, which is so. But then once they are granted bail, the trial takes so long that they end up getting back to the site even before, you know, trial makes any progress. Right. And so I think we need to also look but at like, that. But as, as indicated earlier on, it's a whole gamut of issues exactly. we need to look at. It's exactly. not just, you know, about the court processes per se, but other, you know, uh, factors no, that I, are about. I, but I, we, I, we, we need to wrap up on the show, so your yeah. concluding remarks. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I mean, with this Galan say thing, I think one of the things we need to be much better at 
is um, redefining policy. We seem to look at policy as something static. Mm -hmm. We are not quick at evolving, reviewing, and changing policy to be in tandem with the needs and aspirations of people. So in my view, the judiciary ought to look at corruption as something that is seriously eating away at our progress and begin to put in place, if it is a fast track courts or whatever it is, to deal with some of these things in a timely manner so that other parts and aspects of life can go on swiftly. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important thing. Sure. So whilst we're talking about it, we want to make that appeal to the judiciary, the current chief justice. Let's look at the issue of corruption. What kind of court systems can we put in place to, to deal with this swiftly yeah. and radically so we can make the kind of progress we ought to be making as a nation? Very well. Thank you. Gary, your concluding Well, remarks? I think that I, 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 I largely agree. There could be special courts set up for this purpose. But you know? we do have the special courts for Galamse, right? I should think yeah. so. Yes, I should think yeah. so. There's a special court for these things. But let me assure Ghanaians that it's something that the president is committed to fighting this Galamse menace in this country. And I, I, I can assure you, by the time we, we go through this process and we are ended, we will see a full-blown effect on our water bodies. So Ghanaians should rest mm -hmm. assured that uh, this matter is not going to die anytime soon. Mm. The question is whether we have the luxury of time to make, given all... The devastation going on, but Mr. Kwaku, your last. Your yes, last let me also add that I also strongly believe in the you know conviction and uh, will of the president to fight. Except to say that, I mean, uh, the president must also you know put the jobs. For me, I think the president must put the jobs of the people that he gives this responsibility also on the line, <laughs> so that the people know that look, I, I mean, I, I'm the president. I have assured the citizenry, yeah. if you misbehave, I will sack you. But that is, and doesn't when, that go without saying? If he, he has put his already. job on the line. Impliedly, it yours is on the line yeah, as well. Let's make it explicit now. The reason mm. why I think, you see, it was imp by implication, it was. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I think most of these leaders were able to act is that, you see, the tax force was set up in such a way that they became so powerful. Mm. I can assure you, we meet people from Minerals Commission, etc., who tell you that, look, we can't do much because everything, I mean, you have to recourse to, you have to have recourse to uh, the, the, the tax force. Right. And I think that maybe that has affected them. So now the president must explicitly say, DC, Oh, he should Very fire well. a few people. Very yes. Well. I'm, exactly. Maybe that would be deterrent enough. Anyways, yeah. this is where we draw the curtains on the show this morning. We do appreciate your time and your contributions. And also to say a big thank you to my guests, um, Mr. Edward Akwaku, who is the Director of Policy and Research with Artisanal and Small Scale Mining Africa Network, ASMAN. Uh, we've also had Mr. Garni Mako, uh, lawyer and a member of the NPP legal team, and Mr. Adam Senan, who's the co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. Earlier on, we had Honorable Alaji Inusa Fuseni and Mr. Bobby Banson join us. Thank you so much for making a date with us. We'll be back here same time in seven days. Do have yourselves a very good weekend and a productive week ahead of you. Bye-bye.